Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1. Please, everybody write, especially the men, whether you are standing, even if you are sitting on a tree, get a piece of paper this night and write. You know, I've told us when you come, especially for those of us who are new, please get a good notebook or something. Um, make sure you are writing. One of the things that we have to come to terms with in life is the dynamic nature of life please listen carefully pay attention the dynamic nature of life life is in phases and at certain periods in our lives we are compelled to experience what we call transitions everybody say transitions um, in in biology or primary science they teach about what we call the life cycle of insects right it starts from what egg Lava. Some of you got zero. You still will get zero today after many years. From eggs, some of you are saying adults. How can it be that? Hmm? And so we see that there are what? Transitions. And at every stage, the rule is different. Hallelujah. At every stage. Now, for us humans, there are phases of transitions. You start from a, a baby when you are born down to that early stage of childhood, right? And then you get into teenage. And from teenage, people say young adult. I've, I've told you my position in those things. I don't believe an adult is anybody who is not a child. Whether you are young or old is irrelevant. Adults and from adults... It continues like that. And at the end of your life, you can now look back and see whether you spent your life impacting people or being a liability to humanity. So one of the challenges, watch this. And I truly thank God for giving me this paradigm as a person and giving us the opportunity to communicate this as a ministry. What I call a balanced growth. My obsession has always been to bring balance to the body of Christ. Right? I attack violently any trace of imbalance in the body of Christ. Maybe it's because of the apostolic office, but I hate an exaggeration of truth and one dimension of life above and beyond the other. Right? So, I don't want to raise people who are spiritual, tongue-talking people, but are broke failures in life. And on the other hand, I don't want to raise people who will build houses, be mighty people, and go to hellfire. Are you getting me? I don't want a situation where all the brothers are praying in tongues, but every time when you are going to somebody's house to get married, the father looks at you and says, Young man, what is your name? Say, My name is, is Christian. Say, huh? what, what, what difference does that make? What are you here for? He say, I saw a flower. I say, You, a flower. Where? You know? But there are essentials that if we do not address, you see, Part of the spirit of leadership, not just being a man of God, leadership is to discern transitions and to bring relevant teachings that build people strategically according to the seasons of their lives. Are you following me now? 
If I go to a congregation where I'm talking to professionals, there is my approach, my examples, right? And my communications become different. If I'm teaching in a children's class, you can't sit down in a children's class and tell them about relationships and marriage and the rest. You are, you are spoiling those children. You are supposed to be teaching them how to press into God, you know, all of that. And you cannot be talking to, um, say, grand people of 70, 80 years. And you are talking to them and, you know, saying certain things. So, part of leadership, and, and this is the entire scope of what we call in theology homiletics. Not just the art of teaching, but the ability to communicate. Right? We live in a generation where you must make sure that the questions you are trying to answer have been asked. There are many preachers who are, ask, who are answering questions nobody is asking. So, while it is true that we must remain aligned with what the Spirit is doing, we must also be able to transit the body of Christ. The church is an institution, right? An institution is a platform that is able to mold people's mindsets and ideologies. And part of the job of preachers is to be able to help the body of Christ become successful and relevant even societally I was saying it in the leaders meeting and I said look my project this year among other things is to trust God that as this rain falls rain cannot fall on a land and you don't see anything growing with time is that true so that rain will fall on us in the name of Jesus but then just, just prophesying and saying the name of Jesus be successful is a mirage. You've done it for years. Nothing happened. Success is not an impartation. There is nowhere in the Bible where you impart success. You can, you can receive impartation of wisdom. You can impart all of this. But the Bible says they are life to those who find them. Not to those who wish. Praise the Lord. Are we there? 13... Verse 11, not 1, 11. When I was a child, that means when I was at a season of my life called childhood. Are you following me now? Certain things happened in my life at that point. Number one, I did what? My conversations were childish. I spoke like a child. And, and nobody, you don't rebuke a child. If we call one of these our little ones now and comes up and we say, say something. And he says, I want sweet. You can't flog him. He's speaking as a child. That is the reality within his age range. And it helps us know that the child is correct. If you call a little child and looks at you and says, where is my wife? Automatically, you know he has been watching nonsense. Either house helps or people have, 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 have raped his mind and transited him to realms that he's not supposed to have gotten there. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, there are seasons I speak like a child so you know a child first by conversation second I understood mindset I had the mentality of a child my understanding was childish some group of um, some of my little children in this place they always come to hug me after service so they wrote me a letter they all came together, wrote different letters and gave me. And I made a mistake and I carried my big mouth and I said I was going to reply the letter. And these children would not let me rest. So today I decided to reply the letter and give them after the service. If you write me a letter and I don't reply it, you, you as an adult, you can't come and pin me. I tell you, look, my brother, the reality, but these ones don't care. They wrote you a letter and they don't care whether you are traveling to the world and back. If we tell them now, next week, all of you come here. You are going to, we are carrying you to where? A place where we we'll go and play. Or even Father Christmas or Father February or Father whatever is coming here. They will come dressed and happy. They don't want to know where you get the money from. They don't care. The cost dimension of life does not apply to them. They don't think cost. They only think reality. You told me you will buy me sweet. Whether you are stealing the money, whether the shop is open or not, where is my sweet? You said you are buying me a car. Where is it? Even if he doesn't have food to eat at that point, he believes that a car is coming. So I understood like a child. Right? 
Number three, I thought like a child. So those things are, they characterize certain seasons. But then the trouble with many people and especially young people is that we do not realize that life does not remain at the same plane. Whether you are prepared or not, sooner or later, transitions begin in our lives. Right? I'll never forget going somewhere and I saw a place that I used to go many years ago. I used to just go there and joke around and play and I said, Jesus Christ, who would have known that that little boy playing around? You see that? See the guys, see some of you touching your face and saying, this is beard. Am I joking? When did he? Welcome to transition. I remember, I remember when, I, when, I, when I was in secondary school, I think it was just one or two. There were these zealous guys that really wanted to start having mustache. They were so, they were excited about it. We had some people who were very hairy and then all of that. But then these guys, it looked like an insult. And you see them sit down and everybody trying to make his voice deep. How are you? And all of that. And now, <laughs> you still see people do it, Abby. All these boys, when they say how far, they just try to make sure that they, they want to force themselves into certain seasons. But then you get to those seasons and you are tired and you wish. There are times that you go to Bab and you say, make sure it's um, a nice Barbie in this and make sure it's the type that will attract the ladies. But now, when you go, you say, are you there? As they are Barbie, they say, what? Just, just keep lowering it. You don't even know what. You don't know what the name of the style you want. Just say start. Start. Whatever it looks like as you proceed, I'll tell you whatever adjustments you make. Some of you even finish Barbie and they say, Cap, say Cap, what difference does it make? Carvin, transitions. Are you following me now? Now, whether you like it or not, you will come to the end of a phase in your life and demand will be placed to transit to another dimension. Are you getting what I'm saying? This is very, very important. Our inability to understand the laws of transition and the demands that we need to make will produce failures. You can succeed at a season in your life and transit and start failing at once. For instance, you can succeed as a child saying foolish things and going scot-free. And then when you transit and forget you have grown, what you said yesterday and people kept quiet, you will say it tomorrow and they will slap you. Is that true? Because a transition has happened. A mistake you made and God kept quiet as if he didn't see it. You make it two years later, you will pay for it dearly. So our ability to understand transitions and the demands they bring is what I want to share very briefly. There are five areas that we must focus on to be called successful in our lives. Never forget these five areas. Number one is your spiritual life. The first area you must focus your spiritual life. Talks about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Your relationship with Jesus Christ your passion about the things of God, your passion about the house of God, your passion about spiritual activities, your, your, your passion to know God and love him more. A season comes in your life where if you don't pay attention to your spiritual life, it will start messing up your life. Now, look at me. Our generation of young people, we thank God for what God is doing right now, but most of our parents did not focus on spiritual growth. What they focused on was academic or intellectual success. Is that true? So if I have a master's today, even if I'm drinking beer, I'm okay. Right? So if I come and meet this lady, come. I meet her and I say, I want to marry you. And they say, how is the guy? I say, he's nice. Is he working? Yes. Where? He's working with uh, civil defense. I say, wow, this is okay. He's nice, went to school, this and that. He drinks, but eh, just touches it once in a while. And so, once, listen, that 
does not look like an issue. Every other thing was a very serious issue. Does he drink? Hey, once in a while, smoking. I only saw him smoke once. Abba, it's okay now. It's better than how many people? And then, we are very happy. That person is called successful because he seems to have something doing. But I'm showing you, sit down, bless you, my dear, that you must focus on spiritual success. Is is a non-negotiable index to measure success and growth. Your relationship with Jesus Christ, your understanding of spiritual things. I will never, never in my life give my daughter to anybody who is not born again and filled with the Holy Spirit and serious with God with traceable evidences of transformation. Traceable. Traceable. You, you not... You can't, you can't say you love God and then we can't see the sign. God is not a, God is not a herbalist. You love God, you've worked with him, there must be a traceable evidence. Number two, finance. Everybody say finance. All the men say finance. Areas that you must focus on in your life if you mean business with success. I don't care how you pray in tongues, pray to the roof and come down. If you do not pay attention to your finance, it may not show now, but as transition happens, you will see the gravity of your not paying attention to it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Wealth. Finance defines wealth, abundance, financial freedom. Very important. I was talking to the leaders and I said, Kai, we need to do something about our brothers. Many of them love God but they are broke. It's not an insult. If we don't do that, other people will come and be carrying our ladies. Because when it's time to marry, God has said, move forward. There is a Red Sea in front of you. Right? The Red Sea. Is, and that Red Sea now is, is, is not Red Sea of demons. You have settled those ones. You left Egypt already. You left Egypt flawlessly. But right now you are standing before a Red Sea. Praise the Lord. If you don't pay attention to your finances, you will be a failure in life. And I tell you this, I give it to you as a guarantee. Number three, family life. Many people learn family life as they get married. When things go wrong, he looks at the wife and says, what's going on? So what's going on? We are messing up. Say, really, what did you learn about family? Say, I didn't learn anything. I only got married. And unfortunately, the institutions that are supposed to build and equip people in this area are failing. Either as a result of negligence. I told you that the church is a school. The church is also an institution. Praise the Lord. There are many people who are getting married. They don't even know what they are doing. They don't understand the implication. Is that true? I was talking to some gentlemen and I said, guys, when do you want to get married? All of them said various dates and all of that. And I said, convince me that your home will not be a disaster. They made a lot of very intelligent statements. Okay, Jesus, they've handed over, the, or they'll hand over the family to Jesus Christ, which is good. Right? Which is good, but not all. Okay, they'll do something, get a job. Good, but not all. Number three, don't forget that in family life, you are not living with animals. You are living with human beings who have a will. How many of you have roommates that you were praying that last session should end? Christians, you love God. You were so happy when you finished the last exam. The roommate said, I'm finally going. Say, I'm, I'm, I wish you a Merry Christmas. You've started wishing Christmas from 2nd of December. I wish you a Merry Christmas. In other words, get out of my room and my life. All of them. All the doors. Just leave. So if you do not understand the principles of human relations, what convinces you that because you saw a beautiful girl or a beauty or a handsome guy? I like the guy. What of you? What do you think? Whether you like the lady or you like the guy, sooner or later, see, during relationship, a lot happens because it's just two of you. When you get married, relatives come in, born again or not born again. 
Are you seeing now? Transition. So many other factors that you are not aware of coming. You get married to the man and all of a sudden the man is yawning and pouring saliva. And you are saying, my Jesus Christ, my Prince Charming. I turned down 30 guys for this gentleman and what is this? The first shocker. Welcome to the reality of transition. You may not have the opportunity to see that. Right? So, the, the trouble is not, I'm not, I don't have a problem with your success at this level. Because you have mastered the level. But when you transit, you will not use the old formula for the new level. Are you getting me? So, I want to share with you that you must know how to transit with life. Otherwise, you will be shocked. As a pastor, the way you pastor a church of 12 members, 14 members, is very different. When 50 members come, out of those 50, there's at least four or five wicked people. They have, they've been, your, your, your leadership style must be able to accommodate the mixed multitude that is coming. That means the way you do ministry for 12 people, I love them, I trust them, they are all, they will die for me. 50 people will not die for you, I guarantee you. Right? When 100 people come, your leadership style and your understanding must change. When a crowd comes, <laughs> everything must change. Same thing. When you get a job, as a JJC, they just gave you a job, there is an approach. The moment they promote you, certain things are expected. Right? As a senior staff, there are some things you do that your corporation or whatever will not be able to take from you. Are you getting what I'm saying? When God began to transit Moses in the anointing, it was simple disobedience of striking a rock instead of speaking to it that stopped Moses from entering the promised land. To you, it may look like that, is, that was too hard a punishment, but compared to what standard? Are you getting me? Was it not Aaron and Miriam that said certain things and they were punished severely? Look at Zechariah, Right? Zechariah said uh, this and that and that. He insulted Gabriel and they shut his mouth. The same Mary asked questions. How shall these things be? And the angel didn't rebuke her. He took time to explain. Because he was dealing with people at two different levels. Are you following what I'm saying? Family life. You can make or ruin the future of yourself. And the people God will bring under your care. If you do not understand the principles of family life. Number four. Very quickly. Your career or your professional life. You must pay attention to it. Or generally speaking your assignment. You can pray in tongues. You can have a good home. If you are a liability in your workplace. You are a liability in your office. You are a liability in your corporation. They will check you out. No matter what kind of tongues you are praying. Are you getting my point? So you must focus on the area of your career the area of your professional life praise the lord and then your assignment generally speaking and the last area is the area of relationships and associations five areas you must pay attention as you transit even in this season what's number one What's number two? What's number three? What's number four? Number five. Listen, if you pay attention to all these areas and you succeed in them, you will become a balanced person. Anointed, wealthy, right? Blessed with the gift of associations. You can impact people. You can live a legacy. This is what God wants for us. And my job is to help us. I don't want an imbalance. Where we are anointed, we are casting out devils. But then we are tied down financially. Or we are succeeding financially, but we are on our way to hell. Right? Or our families and marriages are failing. Listen. Any pastor, any man of God that does not pay attention to these areas will have a chaos in his family. That's why God can never trust certain ministries with certain levels of people. Because we must sustain the ability to balance it. What good is it, listen to me, 
if stand up Zoe Rani, Ken. Assuming both of them are husband and wife. Huh? Husband, wife. How will you love a crowd of tongue-talking people who taught themselves in the morning at home? Wife comes wearing glasses because the man really injured her eyes that morning. And they came and you are full of all kinds of people. And you believe that you are rising but there's all kinds of fight happening everywhere. And you say, turn to your neighbor and you find out that people are not turning to their wives. They are turning to some other people. Right? A husband comes, he sits in front, his wife is down there, the children are somewhere there. They form a triangle in the church because they don't want to see any, they don't want to even come near themselves. You are a failed leader when that happens. Bless you, please sit down. Now, for some of us, like I said, some of the things that I'm teaching may not seem to make all the sense for us. Why? Because of the level that we are in life. I will be touching on some things that will challenge you. But the shock is that transitions are instant. That means you must prepare for a phase before you get there. You don't prepare when you get there because transitions are instant. One moment you write your final exam and you wake up to find out you're a graduate. Whether you believe it or not, you are. You dance and rejoice, but then a transition has occurred. Praise the Lord. You'll be arguing, I want to marry Oh God, my husband must come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I, I smoke him out of everywhere he is. He must come to me. All kinds of prayers. We apply different skills to, to force breakthroughs into our lives. Now the man comes and before you know it, you have become a wife. And you check and find out that it's six months. You are tired of cooking. Oh God, what is this? You did not brace up for the transition. You were more excited about the motions. You were more excited about living singleness than being a wife. You were more excited about wearing a ring than sustaining a good family. Two months into your wedding, you are tired. That's why you see people slap one another and they are tired. Are you doing no? Are you doing no? Well, let's go. There must be an understanding. And then, there are many Christians, and some of you who work, and I'm, I'm sure our daddy prof here will testify, and many other people. Many Christians fail fail in their professional lives. Is that true? They are the ones they downsize. They are the ones they sack. They are the ones who are ineffective. They are the ones who are always doing the wrong things. You give them a paper to present, they make a, a, a mess of it because they don't prepare. They are waiting for the Holy Ghost to prepare the paper and they come up, she da, 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 da. is it your turn? Yes. And they come and make a mess of nonsense. And then we get angry. One of the worst problems of Africa is the belief that our problems are entirely demonic. It's one of the worst things that has happened to the continent of Africa. An easy explanation to failure. Praise the Lord. So your boss looks at you and queries you. And you say, while he was talking, I saw a spirit behind him. As if what he was saying was a lie. You have been ineffective. They now call you in a board meeting and say, Mr. Man, we have all seen what you have done. We want to promote you, but it doesn't look like you have been effective. Praise the Lord. Very important. How many Christians have given God an opportunity to bless them and increase them? How many Christians are CEOs of multi-million and multi-billion dollar corporations? Very few. Because many Christians embrace an average life and we are happy about it. It's God speaking to us. And we keep talking and say they made an unbeliever the CEO. You will stand side by side with that person and you will not be able to deliver in, in even if the standards were lowered. Praise the Lord. Am I challenging us? How many Christian students pass WAEC? Let's be very sincere. How many Christian students pass JAM? People play around and then two days to the exam, they are just smiling around. How many Christian young people get employed one or two years after graduation? Because the biggest problem with Africa is the transfer of blames to demons. You can't sue demons to court. You can't summon them before a judge. So we, we do not concentrate on our assignments and on our, our professional lives. How many men of God are able to deliver? They call and say, Lord, bring a crowd. They, they understand nothing about leadership principles. 
They think all there is is the ability to lay hands. No, sir. No, sir. Organizational skills, zero. Leadership skills, zero. Communication skills, zero. Right? Crisis management skills, zero. And now you want God to give you a crowd. You want to go on air. Is God speaking to us? And then our relationships and associations. People skills. If you fail in these five areas in life, then you are truly a failure. I don't care whether you got first class in school. If your spiritual life is dead and all other areas are dead, I guarantee you life will whip you in a way that you will be shocked. And I want us to be successful. Status is changing. It's no more decline. You're on your way to better death. It's not magical. It's a process. Status is changing. It's no more decline. Please write very quickly why many people are failures or mediocres in life. Write why the reasons, reasons why many people, especially young people, end up being failures and mediocres in life. There is a reason, there is a reason why many people end up being failures. They go to school, they give their best, they graduate, they do everything and then they step out of life with a lot of expectancy. Just like there are some of us seated here right now. We are angry at life because what they told you is not what you are seeing. I don't have a job. There's nothing happening. Every lady I go to, I want to marry you, she says, I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? Why are you sorry? Am I dead? Am I not alive? He said, you are living, but it's like you are dead. Number one, and this is where I want to get our attention now. Gentlemen, pay attention. No pinching around. Be very serious. Number one is mindsets. The first reason why people become failures or mediocres in life is their mindset. Everybody say mindset. lack of mental transition lack of mental transition they are growing older but their minds are not transiting with the new seasons to understand the demands the responsibilities lack of mental transition first corinthians 13 verse 11 said when i was a child spoke like a child understood like a child and he said i thought like a child but then he said something. He said, now that I am a man, what happened? He said, I lay aside. I throw away childish things. So many of us have become men and women, but we have still embraced the mindset that you had when you were 11 years old. Is that true? So although you are married, you are finding out that you are a big child. There is a lot of childishness happening. In your office, you are seeing childishness. That inability to transit mentally. To match the transition that is happening in your life. Mindsets. And there are three aspects we'll deal with under mindset. Number one is dependency mentality. Dependency mentality. Oh God is speaking to us. If you pay attention to what I'm saying, the rain will fall on you truly. Dependency mentality. Everyone say it. One more time dependency mentality because although it is scriptural can I have one gentleman come my brother if this guy is my son watch this if this guy is my son I have a scriptural injunction right as a father to take care of him is that true to take care of him to make sure that he eats well make sure he loves God and all the responsibilities but as the transition begins to occur in his life this child is now becoming an adult. Is that true? That means that there must be a transition. 
but by the time this gentleman is 30 years 25 years and he's still having a dependency mentality that's why we have so many men they are married but their mothers and fathers tell them everything to do because they the transition happened but in their minds they didn't transit are you getting what i'm saying Mommy, what do I cook for him today? He said, what did you cook yesterday? He said, say, Mom. He said, oh yeah, try Gary today. See that? So, that inability to stand, to an extent, brothers and sisters, there are many people who get married and they create a room for them in their parents' house. I'm not talking of a large compound with many houses because the man cannot do anything. Mommy prepares a room for him. He now carries his wife. Later on, the wife is pregnant. She gives birth. And they are all here. It's a terrible thing. It's a cause. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, dependency mentality. They were giving you pocket money. Maybe 5,000, 10,000 per month. And now you graduate. And five years after graduation, you start frowning at your father. He doesn't understand why the bad look has happened. Because... He expected that you would have realized. They gave you scholarship. You were blowing it. Buying books. Buying, uh, buying boots. Buying trainers. Buying everything. After all, my father, he gave birth to me. Right? And now you are finished and your father says, um, I think you should be considering moving. Say, moving to where? Is it not you who is supposed to build a house for me? The Bible says this and that and that and that shame on many young people because although they are old we are quick to look for women but very slow to transit you see a lady ah i like this lady and where are you what are your plans that transition dependency mentality hallelujah to an extent that you see a young man some of you are looking at me as i'm talking to you now you are in this category you are seated and you get up shamefully very shamefully and you call your old parents from their pension and you say popsy yeah can you transfer something to me and he says okay things are not going on i say it's, it's always like that you're always and you cut the call and you are raking and your mediocre friends are massaging you say calm down please calm down calm down you know old people with this their thing and your mother is crying on phone at home and say, my son, it's not like I don't love you. What is all that? Eh? It's not this and that and that and that. I beg Jare, send me some money. And then they go and borrow money. And as old as you are, they send money. You use 10,000 to buy cake and celebrate 30 years. And it doesn't occur to you that there is a transition. Is God speaking to us tonight? Oh, you must grow in the name of Jesus Christ. You may not like me now, but I will come to your homes and you will thank me for it. See, let me tell you, the person who loves you is the person who tells you the truth. It may challenge you, but it will make you a better person. Some of us, we have this over-dependence on everybody. Your father's first responsibility to, is to his wife, not you. To his wife, not you. Hallelujah. To an extent that there are many people who are, I know people who are working, but still want their parents to give them money. They are working, collecting salary, 100,000. They collect the salary and keep and say, Mommy, how far? Dependency mentality. You become a parasite to everybody. There are people who everywhere you go when they see you, you are tired. You call people, they say well, he's not around. And he's the person you are looking for who is talking. He picks the phone and says, please, John is not around. He says, ah, are you not John? He says, ah, he's not around. He calls the call because there is a parasite mentality. Right? As a young man, you don't, learn, you don't want to learn how to cook and you don't want to be rich. A paradox. You want to go to the restaurant every time and then you want to remain broke. If there's nothing there, learn how to cook. If you can't cook anything, learn rice, beans, swallow. It's a good start. It's a good start. Is God speaking to us, please? Take what I'm saying very seriously. 
Because if you don't, sooner or later, you will see that it will whip you seriously. I counsel a lot of people. And when couples come, their number one problem is the inability. As I hear them speak, I still see children speaking. Because there is that, it has happened in church. But mentally, there is that dependency mentality. So the man looks at his wife and says, Mommy. She looks at the husband and says, Daddy. And then there is a mommy-daddy fight going on. Because everybody is depending on who. Why didn't you wake me? I need to be at the office by 7.30. Why didn't you wake me? Oh, guy, you are married. Your mother woke you when you were going to JS1. Five o'clock. That old woman will get up and put water for you and do everything and iron your clothes. You are married. To an extent that some of us are pests to our roommates, office mates. You never cook. You don't ever say anything about cooking. Bros, you don't do just step into people's rooms and when they see you coming they say lock the door lock the door this parasite is coming your life is not supposed to be that way hey, hey look hold on please i hope as we are laughing we are listening your life is not supposed to be like that a parasitic life everybody runs away from you because you have a dependency mentality you never have the opportunity to manage situations you have headache. You are running around expecting everybody to say, you, you see that? And, and the ugly part is when it happens for men. It makes, it's okay if it happens for women. But a matured man and another matured man, oh boy, sorry, oh, you have headache. What is that? Praise the Lord. The guy is not feeling fine. Who should tell you to get up and go to a clinic? It's not like there's no money. We are used to dependency mentality. Mommy, where are you? Come and take me to the hospital. You are 30 years. Dependency mentality. So that's what happens. When that kind of man gets married, his children can be sick and he will look at them like that because he's not used to taking responsibilities. Dependency. No food at home. Eh? So what? No food. That's it now. They sack a man from work. Ten years later, he has not gotten another job. And he doesn't care. He said, what happened? To you? you know the way Nigeria Railway Corporation, that time we were working. Railway? I was working in Nitel. I was working in this. And he's qualified. The CVs are there. Ah, you hear me this night. Bless you, please. Mindsets. Dependency mentality. You must get out of it. Do make up your mind not to be a pest and a parasite to anybody. Say, I am a blessing, not a parasite. Say it, I am a blessing, not a parasite. When you were small, when you visit your uncle, once you are going, they, they carry smarties and conflicts and milk and bon vita. Now you go and meet them. They are old and you see that. You say, Uncle, I'm going. No, he said, May the Lord bless you. I had you. You are a graduate. Now, where did you even serve? I served in Ondo. And immediately you finish. They say, Ah, so they gave you all those 20,000 allowances. Yeah, those things they gave us. And now you finish and you are eyeing your uncle. You are angry because you are expecting him to gather everything and give you. See, I'm not blaming you, I'm challenging it out of you. It does not live by default. You force it to go out. That mentality will never live because you are growing older. I'm telling you, you must make a conscious effort. I made up my mind that the last money I would ever collect from my father was when I was in 100 level. And that was it. I took responsibility over my life. There's no job. Why? In Nigeria now, all this federal government, it's not true. It's not true. What effort have you made? Dependency mentality. So you see students practice this. You give them assignments, they never do it. Right? They are always waiting for a night to submission. Have you seen people like that? And then they come at me, they say, how far? You know, we are fellow koinonia people. So what? They now bring it, you copy that dependency mentality is the root of malpractice. Because you are in the exam hall and you never believe. Please, let's be sincere. 
how many wayek results in nigeria are genuine that the people i'm not condemning are you getting my point how many i i never knew they used to do expo in jam but now there's nothing that doesn't happen all kinds of skills expo here shoes any kind you we have the mindset to be able to innovate ways of cheating something is wrong hallelujah dependency mentality so people pair themselves when they are going to write exams please come and sit down if you don't know i help you if i don't know you help me question one you don't know two you don't know three you don't know the bonus you don't know you don't know anything there because a dependency mentality hallelujah there are many people who are angry with their parents right now they may have failed in not being able to leave a possession for you but let me tell you if you sit down there is the same way your children will be angry with you and say did you have to marry that's what your child will ask you one day see was it by force then you will flog him because that's exactly what happened to you when you asked that question The second mentality on that mindset is the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. The second mentality on that mindset, we're still talking about one, let's hurry up, is the false comfort, false, F-A-L-S-E, the false comfort that comes with generalizing failure. There are many people who become failures in life because they have found a way of generalizing failure. You know, the moment you generalize failure, have you seen people who fail and you ask them why? They say, ah, didn't you hear that there was mass failure? So they now exit themselves and say, no, it's not unique to me. Oga, you've been earning 200,000. After five years, you don't have a plot of land. Say, are you, are you, are you, you don't know what is happening in Nigeria? There is a mindset that spreads failure so that you nicely come out of it. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you've not paid the school fees of two of your children. You are a worker. You say, eh, you know now, the way this whole thing is, eh, is this just us? It's not happening in your office. We, we generalize there is a consolation that comes when you tell people, especially Nigerians, that you are not the only one who failed. Is that true? There are many people like that. So a man of God is falling sick recurrently. Instead of him to go back to the world and find out, why am I not eating? He says, look, uh, you see, we are humans. So you spread the failure and it excuses your unique wrong. Are you getting what I'm saying? Is, is God speaking to us? So every time you fail, you look for somebody who failed just like you to derive comfort. Rather than settling down to say, no, no, I must have done something wrong. What did I do wrong? What steps can I make to fire back? Praise the Lord. That's the reason why we love witchcraft in Africa. Because it's a general thing. So when they come and say your whole family, now nah, I'm not, of course, you know we pray. Next week is miracle service, right? There's a place to deal with that. But let me tell you, it's not everything in our lives that is tied to demons. Stop generalizing failure. There is, there is what you can know that will exempt you. Hallelujah. Say, I refuse to generalize failure. My Bible says when men say there is a casting down, what will be your testimony? See, for as long as you find pleasure in generalizing failure, you will never be great. There are pastors who will never rise to the challenge for their ministry to experience another level. General failure. They say, you know, there's crisis in the north. Yes, it's true that there's crisis in the north. But are you not seeing God doing exploits in the midst of it? You see, when you generalize failure, it makes you comfortable because you are now saying that it's not anything wrong that I did. It's, it's, it's something that affected all of us. Are you getting what I'm saying? I learned early in life to take responsibility for my failures. Why didn't you come? Why did you come late to come and decorate this thing? 
Am I the only one? Did you meet any other person? We all came late. You see, that's it. That's the point. Praise the Lord. Ha, ha. All of you in your family are not married. Yes, we are all like that. You are now happy. In spite of the unique role you play, your role of carelessness and shouting at every man, that has nothing to do with deliverance. Your own lack of understanding of submission, you just rubbed it in the whole picture. And say we are we are we are all we are all there's no marriage coming, it's like that. This is our family, sir. That's why you find out that after prayers, after healing, after deliverance, some people's situation never changes because the factor they've been trying to hide and generalize it is still there. The comfort that comes with generalizing failure. Number three, let me hurry up. The third mindset is an entitlement mentality. Similar to what we call dependency mentality. An entitlement mentality is, is for me, in my opinion, this is the most poisonous of all mentalities because entitlement mentality is the belief that someone owes you something in life. Someone owes you making your success happen. Someone owes you making your life. Are you getting my point? That, that mentality, the government owes me. Right? My father is supposed to give me money. I'm getting married. My father should build a house for me. Buy a car. It's my right. That, that entitlement mentality is a dangerous mentality. The belief that someone else is responsible for your well-being. The belief that somebody else is entirely responsible for your well-being. is an entitlement mentality. We blame parents for our failures. We blame the government for our failures. We blame a lot of external factors. Every time we are mentioning the things that make us fail, we never talk about ourselves. We never say our contribution to the equation. Hallelujah. Um, Elijah, why did you slap Shay? I slapped her because she has been playing with my intelligence. And this other guy who is supposed to talk didn't talk. I'm watching you. I'm coming for you. You see, we never say, look, I got this wrong. I'm not in a good relationship right now. I've entered 10 relationships. Nothing has worked. Probably there's something. There is my outlook about life. There is my perspective. It's ego stinging to come to a point where you accept. But that is the point of true liberty. Are you getting what I'm saying? I begged my father for car to go and greet her father with it. My father refused. If my father only gave me the car. Wouldn't I be married by now? An entitlement mentality. I begged my father for jam money. He refused to give me. Though I've not written the jam. Let me fail, but I see if your destiny is in your father's hands. Please hear me, Koinonia. I'm speaking to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You must quit that, that entitlement mentality from today. Some of us have been sending insultive text messages to our loved ones insulting them and say i'm disappointed i asked you for five thousand you cannot even send it mommy this is to let you know i respect you as my mother but I'm, I'm disappointed send you are cursing yourself people return back to their rooms and look at their roommates and they are frowning when i know cook ah you didn't bring ingredients you didn't bring the food you didn't buy kerosene you didn't wash the plates but there is an entitlement mentality. Something in you lies to you that the whole world is just about you. That's the entitlement mentality. Pastor Jakes, I beg, I feel get something from you. He said, no, what for? I'm hungry. Entitlement. That's why you see in many churches, there are all kinds of people who wait for people to share testimony. Oh, God gave me three million and somebody is waiting for them immediately after the service. Say, well done, sir. Your testimony really touched me. You see, 
I hope there are no people who do that kind of thing here. So you are a pest to everybody around you. You are just waiting for people to succeed. And then they pay you like it's a right. Your success depends entirely on you and God. Never forget that. It's God speaking to us. I knew this early in life. And it has helped me. That belief that somebody will make you successful is devilish. Grow up tonight and get out of that mindset. Why are you not playing your keyboard very well? And eh, nobody bought keyboard for me now. Who will buy it? Why have you not risen to that dimension? Why have you not started the business? Where will I get the capital? Everybody I meet is not giving me. Who was assigned to give you? You know, the entitlement mentality is an ugly mentality. It makes you believe everything in the world is all about you. You carry your problems and distribute it. You just come. Have you seen people like that? They come and meet you. The guy talking is wearing trainers of 11,000. He's wearing stock jeans of over 6,000. Dressing well and he's saying, um, I just came to meet you, Kai. Food stuff has finished. As if it's what is it's a surprise to you. Shouldn't it finish? Are you not using it? Food stuff has finished. And you say, um, so how can I help you now? You say, I need like 30, 30 will do me. Look at, he's, he's seeking help from somebody. And he's coming with a childish, right? Entitlement mentality. There are some of us who, and that's the danger. The danger there is, when somebody starts helping you, it almost becomes like a right. Have you seen people that came to our homes or our families? They were trained parents took care of them at a point that entitlement mentality started. Have you seen people like that? Terrible thing. You see a man and his wife, maybe rain washed their house and they came to stay in your house for one month. Right? Very soon they start complaining. I've been watching the way madame is putting food for her husband. Ah, What did you expect? I noticed the way she puts food for my own husband. You are squatting in somebody's house. Entitlement mentality. My uncle gave me a job in this company. How can I be in this company? My uncle is there. And I'm not one of the directors. My uncle... Uncle Solomon that grew up in our boys' quarters. I cooked for him. So what? So what? You come late. They've put a circular in, in, your, in your reception desk. Resume work by 6.30. You come by 10. You've done that for three years. They didn't, um, they didn't promote you. Your uncle has done everything to lift you. And you are not cooperating. Yet entitlement mentality. How many people have we hated innocently in life? How many of our parents have we called witches and wizards because of entitlement mentality? To an extent, some of us can go somewhere and buy clothes and say they should go and meet your mother to collect the money or your father or your brother. I refuse that mentality. I refuse it. I refuse it. I refuse it. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's God speaking to us. Some of these things I'm saying, when it applies to you and it shoots at you like an arrow, just let it enter you because it will, it will refine you and it will make you as gold. Ladies and gentlemen, let me announce to you again that transition is here. Embrace it. Whether you like it or not. While I sat down, I think it was um, whether January or so, Miracle Service. And they were the celebrants. If your birthday is January, come out. And I saw a lot of people smiling. And I said, transition. Transition. Praise the Lord. Whether you are prepared or not, transition is here. Praise the Lord. My, my sister did something that touched me today. In the afternoon, while I was just meditating, I got an email from my sister. And she sent me 
I, I still want to do it. I've been trying to do that on my phone, but it's, I wanted to show all of you. I wanted us to project it here. Our old six massacre 2009 crusade crusade photo. I really would love us to have that. I think we can work. I have it in my email. Eh? Get me a laptop with internet and I'll transfer it. Yes. I want you to see it. One day we'll come up. We have the video. I think we have the video of our 2007 crusade. You will see all of us there. You see Victor, the head of the department of protocol. They all held firewood on their head. Hey, oh. That's what the song they were singing and jumping. Hey, oh. And you see us so lean looking like like whatever transitions but here we are today 10 years after now we will look back you will see the pictures of today and you will smile you will tell your daughter that was me say are you hearing that was me i was serving the lord all my life so don't think is this lie that most of our parents lied to us they said they were su president they were the best footballer in their school they were best everything our own has proof you can see it and you can know praise the lord one last mentality mediocre mentality mediocre mentality mediocre mentality we are still talking about the reasons why people become failures and mediocres. And I'm, I've just touched on number one, medio mentalities, mindsets really. Mediocre mentality. What is a mediocre mentality? It's the mindset that tells you impact, influence is carnal. It's a mindset that is satisfied with being small, being quiet. The mindset of an average life. The belief, the fallacy that an average life is the greatest way to make heaven is a mediocre mentality that mindset of being small have you had people like that me all i want god just give me one small golf one two house anywhere whether in the bush or wherever i'm grateful let me just have my two children if we can eat food in the morning even if it's once a day god be praised it's a mediocre mentality no matter how spiritual you try to make it there are churches like that. We are happy. We are a simple, nice family church. We are happy. This guy has been there for the past 10 years. We are there. We are not doing anything. We are not letting anybody know what God. We are happy. We are okay like that. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising There's an army rising up, and they will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Kingdom advancement, kingdom advancement is tied to one word, influence. One word, influence. Without influence, there is no kingdom advancement. I want you to know that. When the church is quiet in a society, there is no influence and there is no advancement. The church in Nigeria is not quiet at all. That's why we are involved in everything in this country. The church, Nigeria is the most religious country in the whole world. And forget about the errors here and there. I tell you, the church in Nigeria is alive. We have a say in everything from the executive government. Everybody knows in Nigeria that you don't downplay the church and go scot free. Influence. I've studied revivals, I've studied um, technological revivals. It was all tied to the church. Are you getting what I'm saying? We need men and women of influence. Get my teaching, Conquering Cosmos. There I teach on what we call strategic apostolic invasion. It's not just sharing tracts. Influence. What is wrong if Koinonia has 10 bank managers as, as your members? You imagine that. We call that influence. Where one person represents a nation. Influence. 
influence. Are you getting what I'm saying? Please don't ever reject influence in your life because God wants to give it to you. It was through influence Jesus was able to advance the kingdom. The Bible says it was noised abroad that that celebrity was in town and he had the opportunity to teach and to heal and to deliver. It says in, in Matthew chapter 5, it says you are the salt of the earth. You add value. You give meaning to the earth. You are not just a tongue talker. He calls you the salt of the earth. He calls you the light of the world. And he says you are a city. Not like a city. Not a village. You are a city. Hallelujah. I refuse to be small in my life. Nobody will preach me into being small. I rejected it long ago. I still reject it. Koinonia will not be small. Souls are saved because of the influence. Destinies are changed because of the influence. During the retreat, media people told us the targets that they want on Facebook and the rest. And I told them, go for it. We are going all the way for it. Let me tell you, this is not a small ministry. We are visionary people and we refuse to be small. And you will never be part of this vision and be small. I will challenge you. I will challenge you. Thank God for where you are. But we will not allow you to remain there. You must rise. Because there is coming a renaissance. There will be an emergence of people in every area. Hallelujah. It was a mirage in nigeria if one person owned a television station is that true television station i remember that time you own a television station they tell you every kind of thing and god said come on where are those apostles and men and women started rising 2005 the lord revealed to me that there will be 37 christian stations in nigeria and today how many lives have been blessed through the power of the media are you getting what I'm saying? All the technological gurus and the rest. Imagine you making a, a laptop that the, it must not mention Jesus. But imagine that you put it on and, and the sound for it to start is a deep worship song. Whether you like it or not, you must buy it. Hallelujah. Praise God. You must make your presence known. Is the, is, the, is, is the principle of dominion. Part of dominion is to make your presence known in a territory. Then they will adopt your ideologies. Then they will embrace your convictions. If there are, if there are hundred millionaires, I'm not talking of one million, real millionaires in this place, I guarantee you, your spheres of influence will. I, something happened, I think... Um, I went, one of our ladies here, she's, she's technically my account officer with one of the banks. And, um, and uh, we're going, she had been forcing me to come and collect my card. My card had expired. And she was forcing me to come and collect the card. She said I should get back into banking with them and all of that. And then eventually I went. She had prepared everything. When I got there, she was greeting me. Her superior was just looking at me. Who is this guy? And before I know it, I saw one Koinonia member coming again. And then one other lady coming to greet. I said, that's right. This is the kind of testimony we want to be seen. When they came and they were greeting, ah, the man squared up and said, oh, well done, sir. I told him, I said, this, this lady is the one who is forcing me to come to this bank. Look at her. See that? What does that mean? Promote her and lift her because she's doing a good job. The influence of the kingdom. I don't know who taught you that mediocrity brings glory to God. I want you to know that the more you have result, the more your words become powerful. Results add weight to your words. Results add Refuse a mediocre mentality. Refuse it. Hallelujah. Refuse it. Pastor Jakes in his place of work, within a short time, when he was announcing his, his promotion and his lifting, I smiled. I said, those guys, those guys, come on now. Physical competence, the anointing, wisdom, grace, everything combined, you can't be small. Shout it, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. 
please, I'm challenging you. Thank God for the photocopying business, but don't die there. Start small, but I'd like you to see beyond. Who is God speaking to? I'd like you to see beyond. Refuse to be small. The influence of the kingdom is the key to strategic apostolic invasion. Michael Jackson is long dead, but last year alone, his album made 150 million US dollars. In fact, when he died, three days after his death, they made 120 million dollars at his death. The man who feeds you is the one you will listen to. Is that not true? For as long as the world system keeps feeding us, we will be forced to listen to them. But I tell you, there is an army. Ha! There's an army rising up. This is why we are teaching these teachings. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. 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 One more time. There's an army. There's an army rising. Things will not continue to be this way. I tell you. There's an army rising up to break every chain. Break every chain. It is not the will of God for you to be small. It does not glorify God in any way when you are small. John 15, I think from verse 8, when you read down, it says, Herein is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Much fruit, not little fruit. Much fruit. much fruit. Look, I'm not talking of some carnal fleshly wanting to make it in life. I'm talking of lifting with an assignment. Influence that is intentional as a means to an end. It makes your words powerful. You are able to speak. Hallelujah. That's why we must speak into your life. Oh, you will get the oil company job. That devil will not stop you. The, the, no, there are the principles. You will get it. You will be wealthy. You will be blessed. The devil will be alive to see it. I will never raise a poor congregation. Never raise a weak congregation. A weak congregation produces a weak man of God. A weak ministry that has no voice. I will never let anybody watch me on TV and scroll and say, next, this useless man, part of the noisemakers. No. That when you listen, you say, this is it. I had one word and it changed me. You must embrace the influence of the kingdom. I don't know what you have been taught, but you must change your mind. We have small parents, innocent but small, small families, small everything. Small. I got my small degree. I read my thing. I don't even want anything. Let me just get I got one teaching in one LEA school. I'm okay. 7,000 is enough. What am I looking for in this life? Stop that. Stop that kind of devilish thinking. Remember, let me always balance this. I'm not talking of this carnal, lustful affinity for the things of the world. I'm talking of gaining kingdom influence with the exact intention. Right? The exact intention to bring the glory and the kingdom of God. There was a time Jesus came in the city and he stole the show from all the scribes and Pharisees. The guys were angry. They said they are not listening to us again. Ah, uh -uh, what happened? Look, let me tell you, Koinonia, we are a city. We are a city. You are not a village. You are not small. 
I separate you from that small mindset. You may be in a small room now. Think big. You may be in a small hut now. No problem. Soak the gari, but see the world. There is much to do for the kingdom. God has increased and expanded our influence through the teachings and through the meetings that we've got. And we have seen more souls. Look at the gentleman. Where is that guy that came that shared his testimony? Oh, he's outside. Oh, look at That's the gentleman. All the way. We call it kingdom influence. How many people claim they saw Jesus and he said the words he gave them, he said they should take it out of the earth. But they are poor and broke. It has not come out. Not even everybody in the city knows. And it's not that they had a wrong encounter. Hallelujah. Influence. Influence. You must embrace it in the name of Jesus. Say, I refuse to be small. Say it, I refuse to be small. Challenge yourself, I refuse to be small. The second reason why young people become failures my spirit is fired up. We are going to pray. The second reason. I told you the first is the mindset. Second reason is laziness. Laziness. You're my treasure, my priority. Who can compare to you? Great is the match of your royalty. Oh, morning star, you true. So laziness, everybody say laziness. The second reason why people become failures in life is laziness. There is this spirit of laziness that is upon many Nigerians, upon many young people, an inertia, a reluctance to move forward, inactivity, satisfied with their levels, closely tied to laziness, is the spirit of procrastination. I will do it another day. Oh, I will do it. Is it not savings? I will save the money. Is it I will do it? I will do it. Procrastination is a dangerous spirit. Pray for your destiny. I will pray. Settle down. Begin to study in the unique area God has called you. Man of God, study about church growth. I will study one day until all your members leave. And then you start getting angry at everybody. All these people, are you sure they didn't touch their hand? Go and touch it too, if it's available like that. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many lazy people in Nigeria. And the Bible talks a lot about laziness. The Bible talks about laziness. The moment you are lazy, get set to beg. You have signed an agreement with begging no matter who you are and i have found something with lazy people hate begging they hate begging they feel embarrassed don't worry just bring it bring it bring it i'll do it fast lazy people hate begging hallelujah Sorry for the little distraction. Let's pray. Pray in tongues while I do this. Is that all right? All right, so go ahead and pray. Pray in tongues very quickly so that it will sink. It will sink down.
Your word is producing results in my life. Hallelujah. Laziness. There are many of us who are lazy. Look at me. When it is time to sit down, you sit down. But if it is time to get up and act, huh? when there is an anointing for something, you stand up and act. There are many people that if you took action when God spoke to you, you would have built the house by now. There are many people, if you took action, you would have gotten that job. Action, laziness. I would do it. No. Unfortunately, time does not wait for everybody. And if you want to wait until everything is right, you will never move in your life. The Bible says, he that considers the weather will never sow and as a result will never reap. Hallelujah. Laziness. Inaction. Procrastination. That inertia. Refusal to move forward. You are sitting in your room. Somebody just sows a thousand naira and the Lord says, get up and go to Jordan bookstore. I gave you that money because there is a book I want you to buy. He said, eh, no problem. You sit with that money immediately. You sit before you know it. You have spent 200 naira from it. See that? Before you know it, you finish the money. You just sit down there. Let me tell you one way the devil kills people. Sleep. I know God gives sleep, but Satan can also give sleep. Sleep. This sleep. It looks little. I was teaching the school of ministry students and I told them, if you sleep eight hours a day when you are 30 years, you've slept for how long? You've slept for 10 years of your life. Exactly. By the time you are 30 years, just know that you are in reality 20 years because the whole 10 years went into sleeping. You sleep from 8 o'clock. You wake up. Round one waking is around four. You just wake up and check if there's any Nigerian film around. When there is none, you lie down. You wake up around nine. That's the second phase of, of the waking up. It's not like you sleep marathon. You wake up, just browse around, and then maybe you plug water for bathing and get back to sleep. Before you know it, it's one o'clock. You just yawn and stand up. And you sit down, you are lazy. as guy sleep. You will be poor. Guaranteed. Please, brothers and sisters, hear me. Love not sleep too much. It will rob you of the anointing. I, I don't know any man who carries true anointing who loves sleep. No. No, sir. No, sir. I've been awake today since at about... I think maybe 2.30 or 3. God is my witness. I've been awake. And as I go back now, it's not like I'm going to go and jump on my bed and start sleeping. No. What is your concept of success? Look, success is not cheap. It's not for children. T.D. Jakes wrote a book, Can You Stand to Be Blessed? It takes stamina to be distinguished. So for those of us who think the anointing comes and you just lie down and sleep and snore away your life and wake up and find yourself successful, you are joking. Wake up. Sleep. Huh? You lie down and sleep. It brings a lot of things. Forgetfulness. You are 30 years. You forget about everything. Somebody says, I'm coming. He comes now. He says, why are you here? He says, I said, I'm coming. Say, oh, I remember. He said, but you are too young for that. Unnecessary sleep. When the night time, when you should wake up and study and pray. 
some of us people can be gisting they can even lie down on your bed and wake up you didn't know that anybody lay down there because you sleep and and the sleep is so deep you wake up and you are frowning ah why did you wake me it's a bad attitude i know you won't like me i will still say it i love you too much to leave you that way especially for the gentleman please love not sleep if you find yourself sleeping around just just imagine money disappearing from your life one two anointing disappearing from your life wake up don't you know there is the mystery of the night time look at the prophets in the bible look at men look job said i mean the psalmist said in the night time during his time of meditation when things are revealed to him the night time is when great men get insights is the time where men of power travel in the spirit okay it's, it's, it's true that you are tired at least three four or so wake up don't let your body cheat you you need to drag it and say no way i refuse to let my flesh make me a failure in life who is god speaking to there are certain people even five o'clock waking up in the morning that families used to do you know that thing they do five o'clock you wake up you carry your bible drop on your bed and sleep on it somebody will come and see you and think you are on, on that deep med who are you cheating who are you lying to when you see somebody please don't play that kind of expensive game with your destiny i'm not telling you not to sleep there are times i take out time to rest but brothers and sisters if you must be great there is a price please hear me koinonia there is a price hallelujah so laziness we must walk on it laziness kill procrastination from your life there are some things god has told you people to do god told you to sow a seed i will do it tomorrow god told you to get up and read on leadership i will do it tomorrow Do it now do it immediately number three fear the reason why many people become failures and become mediocre in life fear 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 of failure fear of being embarrassed not just failure but fear of repeated failure it's true that failure is embarrassing it's true that failure is lashing, is ego stinging. But it is in your failure that you find the door to true victory. Please hear what I'm saying and take it seriously. Fear of being seen as a failure. Is that not what is responsible for our fake lives? Right? You go and borrow a shoe of 20,000 naira. And you went and say, this shoe, 20,000 naira. Is it your own? No. Because you don't want to fail. People borrow phones. I beg, I just want to stroll to Ribadu. Can you help me with your phone? What for? You borrow watch, borrow clothes, borrow phone, borrow everything, borrow mindset, borrow everything. And in the end of it, you find out that there is no authentic life. I've told us again and again in Koinonia, stop trying to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. Pay the price. That's why we don't discriminate anybody here. I don't want to know who you are or who your father is in terms of maybe preference and all of that. I treat everybody with honor and dignity because I believe everybody can be everything if you get the word. Hallelujah. Fear of failure. Look at me. Why didn't you start the business? Failure made you to give a lot of excuses. Why didn't you go and apply for the job? have not served do they take people who have not served did you go did you go you see ba look at me many of us write a lot of prayer requests next week now there will be another one i, I you know i kneel down to pray and i see it some of you is full scab you write it and then you write uh, please turn over that means it has not finished oh, there's still some more but the issue is that do you really believe that as the anointing comes on it you will need to take action you see why I've been teaching us on faith. Faith in one word is obedience. Action. I refuse fear. Is it because people will talk about you? 
Fail and see whether people won't talk about you. What you are running away from will come. Whether through the door of success or failure, it will still come. The greatest way to reply critics is massive success. Continue your results. Let the result keep speaking. You wrote jam. You didn't pass. So what? Why don't you write again? Are you hearing what I'm saying, please? Fear. Nigerians can fear. And many of us, that fear makes us to give ourselves excuses. I'm young. Please, there's time for everything. When is the time? I'm young. He told Jeremiah, do not say I am a child. Don't say I'm a child. Don't say I'm a child. Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett, the, the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, one of the top three wealthiest people in the world, he was asked a question that um, was the greatest mistake he made in his life. And he said he started investing at a um, very late. What is the late? Eight years old. Eight years old. Sila. Think about what I just said. There are people to start training and building their children, they say it's too small. Do you know there are some of you, if you talk to your parents about finances as you are now, they'll say, what are you, what are you talking about it for? It's, it's an innocent mindset, but it's poisonous. So they tell you, don't worry. Ah, why, why are you rushing? And then before you know it, you now have to face life by yourself and you make a lot of blunders. Say, I refuse fear. Say it, I refuse fear. There are two kinds of fear. Fear of trying and fear that comes as a result of the memory of your past failure. Some people have refused to get into relationships. The last one didn't work. Who said all will not work? You have made adjustments. I remember I went to minister somewhere and I gave a woman a word. I told her, I said, Madam, um, I see that something happened in your home, but I'm seeing you marrying again. Um, ah! No, please, oh, my children, it's okay. I said, ah, Madam, what's the issue? I'm just telling you what God is telling me. That a man is going to come, ask your hand in marriage, and you'll be gloriously said, say, me, marry a man. Me, men. Look at my children. Me, men. The woman was saying, I said, Madam, I'm a man. Oh, please, this one that you are talking about men, I see it's not every man that everybody blah 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 woman started crying I said madam God is bringing a good oh, okay you know how women talk okay well, let's see fear fear that's what has stopped some of us from being champion you are used to failing the day you succeeded and they told you you succeeded they say it's a lie don't play games with me don't you know that the divine life part of the blessings of the divine life is a life of success no matter how you have failed in life hear me I want you to believe that you can come back alive are you hearing me say I refuse to fear say it I refuse to fear. see there is a there is an let me let me use this slang there is an I don't send mentality you have to give life and give people if you want to make it some of us are too careful what will what will Zuerar say now what will mom, we are too careful that 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 excessive care is not is not care unto faith it's care unto doubt and it will kill you there are people today who have refused to learn how to drive because of fear what if i capsize in a gutter you have refused to learn there are others who have refused to learn how to do a lot of things god gave you opportunity to learn so many things there's tailoring now professional tailoring somebody from uk just came and said i want to train you said, Guy, me please i don't want any insult i've seen the way they insulted my madam I, I, I don't want headache you are ready to fail if you think like that you are going to fail in the name of jesus i release upon you the spirit of courage courage you have to face life with courage brothers and sisters wake up stop giving excuses and tell yourself i refuse to fear i refuse to fear it is a risk to do everything in life the only guarantee you have is the word of god get 
get up and in the name of Jesus take steps. Refuse to fear. Koinonia, I'm preaching to you. Refuse to fear. Refuse to fear. Refuse it. I know you carried over the course. Go back again with courage. Fear has kept a lot of people down. The Bible says, and to deliver them who through fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage. To pray for a sick person, fear. You're already stretching your hands. You are looking and say, ah, I'm only in welfare department. Well, let me not disgrace myself here. Fear. Lastly, one of the biggest reasons why many people become failures. Ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact. Ignorance of kingdom principles. Ignorance. This is, in my opinion, the biggest reason. Ignorance of kingdom principles that guarantee a life of success and impact. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written. You cannot observe what you do not know. He said, then, not before, not during, then shall thou make thy ways prosperous, and you shall have not any kind of success, good success ignorance look at me i know we know that by now in koinonia that there are laws in the kingdom prosperity is not magic it's not a wish there are kingdom principles a life of influence you want to be a career of the glory and the power of god it's not a wish there are pathways to it you want to carry honor upon your life you can be blessed. It doesn't mean you are honorable. It says, and Jabez was more honorable. Honor is a law in the spirit. There is what brings honor. You can be rich and not have honor. You can be anointed and not have honor. When honor comes on your life, everybody knows that there is honor upon your life. Hallelujah. Longevity has a principle. Longevity influence has a principle and he said in matthew chapter 13 now i think verse 11 or so if i'm not mistaken he said it has been given unto you say it has been given unto me one more time it has been given unto me to know the mysteries of the kingdom everybody say the mysteries of the kingdom it is on the strength of those mysteries that you will enjoy dominion it is on the strength of those mysteries that you will do great and mighty things in life. Nobody will just come and bless you for nothing. When during our series, The Mysteries of the Kingdom, I teach on the law of exchange. And I told you nothing goes for nothing. Nothing goes for nothing. There is an exchange that must happen. Hallelujah. Very important. These are some of the reasons why people become failures in life. And part of this is working in our lives, one or two or more, or for some of us, even all of them. We are going to challenge, challenge the gates of failure and say, in this season of the rain, I'm breaking out. No way. I won't remain like that. I won't park where my father parked and become a failure. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me. To the city of Papa, He leads me. Rise up on your feet. And let's begin to pray. Bless the Lord for this word tonight.
these are preparatory teachings for the series that is coming I need to prepare us I don't want to just waste the revelations that God has given me go ahead and prophesy Lord you are leading me day by day I keep rising Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying. Pick up your notebook. You are going to read all those first prayer points, the five areas that you must focus on your spiritual life, financial life, family life, career life, relationship. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy on them one by one and say, Lord, I must excel in every one of these areas. Go ahead and pray. I excel in my spiritual life. I'm moving from one level of the anointing to another. One level of grace to the other. My relationship with Jesus is becoming stronger and stronger. I'm on fire for God. I'm on fire. No lukewarmness in my life. No lukewarmness in my life. No religion in my life. Come on, pray. I'm on fire for God. Burning, burning for the kingdom. Pray for your finances. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be broke. I refuse to be a beggar. I make up my mind that I am a blessing. I am a blessing, not a liability. I am a blessing. I reject poverty. I cause that spirit in my life. Pray. My home is a place of love a place of blessings in the name of Jesus Christ I'm an exceptional father an exceptional husband an exceptional leader pray an exceptional priest Life is a code. Life is a code. C-O-D-E. Thank you. Life is a code. There was so much noise. I don't know where that was coming from. Life is a code. And it takes revelation to unlock the codes and the mysteries of life. Brothers and sisters, as haphazard as life looks, there is a spiritual rhythm that is responsible for manifestation of results. Please hear me. I call them mysteries. The mysteries of the kingdom. Life is a code. It takes knowledge and understanding to unravel it. Nothing just happens. You don't just grow. You don't just experience favor. You don't just prosper. You don't just fall sick. You don't just stay healthy. You don't just live long. And you don't just die. Life is governed by laws. Please listen. Life is governed by mysteries. Bishop Oyedeko calls them kingdom secrets. 
the bible says let, let's look at a few scriptures while i was meditating on this i'm telling you it, it blew my mind media you help us give us job 29 verse 4 job 29 verse 4 then we'll go to chapter 1 verse 3 job 29 verse 4 and then chapter 1 verse 3 hear what job said the richest man in the east he says as i was in the days of my youth when what when the secrets of god was upon my tabernacle he was giving us the explanation this was a defense a justification for his being the greatest man in influence and he said let me tell you it's not because my name is job there was a mystery he said i started doing business with god right from my youth he says when the secrets of god everybody say the secrets of god the secrets of god were upon my tabernacle What did that produce in his life? Chapter 1 verse 3. Same Job. The Bible says his substance. This was a man who had access to divine secrets. The mysteries of the kingdom. Listen. It says his substance was also 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a very great household. It says, so that this man was what? The greatest of all men in the East. And he tells us the secret. He said, don't just envy my influence. What you see, life is a mirror. If you try to change your physical environment, it's as foolish as looking at the mirror and trying to chuck your hand through it to alter it. Life only reflects something happening in the spirit. The greatest man in the east gives us the secret and he says the secret of the lord i traded secrets divine secrets there was an exchange between the holy spirit and me daniel chapter 2 let's see what daniel says daniel chapter 2 verse 19 and then 46 daniel chapter 2 verse 19 is God blessing you already? Life is not haphazard. Daniel chapter 2 verse 19. Listen. This was when the king had a dream. And he was angry. Because all his wise men and lieutenants could not interpret it. And he said, look, we are going to kill everybody. And then Daniel said, no, let the king not be hasty in this. Give us time. And Daniel knew the power of his secret place. And the Bible says, then. Ay, 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 ay. Then the secret was what? Revealed. Brothers and sisters, when a particular kingdom secret is revealed, you hold the keys and you will do wonders with it. There's no, there's, there's no way, no way you can claim you are holding on to a key in the kingdom. And with time, there is no evidence now. It says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel in a night vision and then daniel blessed the god of heaven 46 46 it says listen my goodness a man holds a secret of the kingdom and begins to shock the entire babylonian empire to a point that this happened then the king nebuchadnezzar did what he fell upon his face and worshiped who? God? Secrets make a man like a God upon the earth. A king removes his crown and says, what is this? Daniel. He says he worshiped Daniel and commanded that they should offer oblation and sweet orders to him. Look at verse 28 of the same verse. 28. Hear what Daniel said. Please let's read together. He was now giving us the key. One to read. But there is a God in heaven that does what? And makes known to the king what shall be in the latter days. 
Brothers and sisters, the God we serve is a God that reveals secrets. He can call you and say, come, let me show you a secret. Secret. Do you know them? Do you know the mystery? What you see in this ministry by the grace of God, this little that God is doing, is a product of mysteries. Don't you ever think it's a mistake. It can be reproduced anywhere, any day, any time. Because it's a secret. It says there is a God in heaven. Everybody say there is a God in heaven. That will reveal secrets for me today. Yeah. There is a secret when you handle the story of your family will change tonight. Just one secret. Please believe me. There is a secret God can show you by prophecy tonight. And tell you, look, look, this confusion, you are, you are amiss. This is what is wrong. This is the correction. There is a secret. That delay has a mystery that sustains it. Are we together? That bad luck has a mystery that sustains it. Don't just say people don't like me. Don't you know there is something that makes them not to like you? The same way somebody can turn and look at Benga and say, Benga, God just led me. I don't know why, but take 100,000. No, nobody just acts anyhow. They think they are acting out of compassion, but there is an influence in the spirit. <laughs> there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets. Psalm 25, verse 14. Psalm 25, verse 14. I must burn this revelation in our hearts. I want us to really have it. Psalm 25, verse 14. It says, The secret of the Lord is with who? Them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. The secrets of the Lord is not with believers, it's not with churchgoers, not pastors, not apostles, not prophets. Those who revere him, those who respect him. He will call you and say, come, let me show you something. Let me show you what makes ministry work. Let me show you something that can take your life. Let me show you something that can bring you promotion in your office. There is something. The Bible says the labor of the fool wearied every one of them because he does not know the road to the city. Not because there is no road. He does not know. And part of the blessings of the apostolic ministry and the prophetic ministry is access to the mysteries of a dispensation. Ephesians chapter 3, please. Give us chapter, verse 1 to 3. Ephesians chapter 3. This is an apostolic ministry. This is a prophetic ministry. You must understand the spiritual implication. This is what Paul is saying. Listen. He says, for this cause... Do you know that the mysteries of the kingdom have not, um, it's not yet, it's not exhausted. The revelation, what we know in church today is not all there is. God is still opening more doors. And it takes the apostolic ministry to be able to receive and communicate these dispensational secrets. Current mysteries. 3 verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Verse 2. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word. Verse 3. Read please. 1 to read. How that by revelation he made known unto me what? The mystery. He made known unto me. He showed me by revelation. As I wrote afore in few words. Verse 4. Whereby, listen. When ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Next verse. Shocking. Listen. Which in other ages ah, yeah, 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 was not made known to the sons of men. Stop. Listen. There are mysteries that have been uncovered in, in today's world. That have not yet been people did not access it before not that it was not there 
but that mystery was not meant for that dispensation and the bible says which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto who his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit it didn't say reveal to believers please listen this is not human worship it didn't say reveal to believers the current present truth the operation of the holy spirit administratively is communicated in the body by the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic so there are mysteries that God is helping us. One of the things I pray that will come upon us tonight is a mantle of revelation. Not just miracles, but that you hold on to something. The moment you enter your office, you know what to do to silence wicked men. The moment you step in, you know what to do to move to the next dimension. The Bible says, for Jesus himself knew what to do scripture says it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom can we pray in one minute and say lord there is something i need to know to rise to the next level please show me pray there is something i need to know my God, I pray that you show me. Why does everybody hate me? Could it be that there is a mystery that I need to know? The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. Please pray. Lord, why am I just failing, failing in class? What is the mystery that will end my captivity? Why an endless circle of poverty there is a key hand it to me tonight oh god please hand it to me why do i just fall sick with my church not growing with my home dividing there is a mystery i humble myself tonight why is the anointing scarce in my life? Why have I not access influence in the spirit? Show me the mystery. Are you praying? Open my eyes. This is my year multiplied grace and influence is my year I place a demand is a right because truth right properly just said up in the day of my youth when the secrets of the Lord there are secrets hear me going on we do business in this kingdom with secrets there are secrets we remain on the strength of mysteries pray is part of the meeting you're opening up your spirit lord i'm tired of cycles of failure what's my family there is a mystery really bring deliverance hallelujah listen the bible says they are life to those who find them and only those who seek find they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh Number three. The third thing the Lord asked me to share with us tonight, very powerful, is found in John chapter 5. Please give us John chapter 5. 
we'll read verse 1 to 9. The Lord wants to reveal a dimension of himself tonight as the helper. Listen. Listen. The Bible calls God a Beniza. You know what that means? The helper of men. When God comes in to help you in life, you must succeed. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. We're reading down to verse 9. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, Bethesda having five porches. Right? Verse 3. In this lay a great multitude of... Look at the kind of people there. Successful people don't have any business with that environment. It's an environment that connoted weakness. It says, impotent folk of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Please pay attention. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And then whosoever, excuse me, whosoever then um, first, then first after troubling the water stepped in, was made whole of whatever disease he had. Can you imagine that kind of frustration? One person per year. Just like Nigeria says you should wait until somebody retires or dies. Then they say there's vacancy. You now come. One person per year was a horrifying situation. Then the Bible says there was a certain man. No name. There was a certain man. Which had an infirmity for how long? 38 years. After 38 years, anything you cannot do is a concern. Do you agree with me? After 38 years, anything you cannot do is a concern. At 38 years, no child is a concern. At 38 years, you cannot at least move into your house is a concern. At 38 years, there's nothing meaningful you are doing is a concern. The Bible says this man had been there 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie, now listen, God is about to speak to you. And knew that he had been there for how long? For a... The first revelation is that he knows you have been in that situation for a long time. He knows. And then the Bible says, he said unto him, will thou be made whole? Verse 7. This is what many of us are saying tonight. The impotent man answered, Sir, I have no man. I have no helper. I would have gotten the job, but I have no helper. I would have stepped into another level in ministry, but I have no helper. It says, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, and tonight God wants to be a helper. He walked to him and the man said, I have no helper. But he said, I will help you. You don't need the pool. Rise up. He can use another route. The formula had always been fall inside the water. But he said, let's ignore the water. I am here. Rise up. The formula has been be blessed after 20 years. But God is saying, I can follow another route with you. Such that in one year, I can do something in your life that will surprise you. He said, I have no man. And the Lord said, reveal to my people, I will manifest as a helper. When God helps a man, you will be surprised. The Bible says, Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped. Marvelously helped. Part of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is as a helper. He comes in to help you. That's what grace is all about. That where your effort stops and you say, Lord, if it's based on my qualification, oh, I read whatever it is. 
and God says I am here I can take you to another level oh God I'm here I've been barren they said I don't even have a womb and he says I am here to help you who is God speaking to tonight you really need help only an arrogant person will deny the need for help I have been helped by people in my life and I saw how easy my life became when they helped me are we together now? watch this Benga come I'm trying to lift this and my hand is I can't lift it and then a helper comes and sometimes he can even volunteer to carry everything and he makes my life easy the help of God can make a man's life easy please let me preach to you for one minute I have a responsibility over this house to tell you this and I must say it disabuse your mind from this satanic proposal coming from the media that Nigeria is in trouble economy everybody shouting dollar I like you to shout it count me out say it shout it one more time listen we are not irresponsible citizens don't get me wrong we sympathize with what is happening in the nation but if you dare let Satan speak to you he will destabilize your creativity and crumble your life people who have been irresponsible since before dollar have found a shield to explain their irresponsibility everybody says dollar is rising Is it not in your Bible when men say? Are we together now? It says you will say there is a lifting up. This is not the first time the economy of the world is going into trouble. The Bible says in the days of Joseph, it said money failed. Money failed. But there was a secret that was revealed to Joseph. There is what you hold on to that this year can be the most prosperous year in your life listen god is looking for every opportunity to make a statement afford him your life a christian is not one who has just received jesus into his life a christian listen is one who operates by the principles of the word of god our economy is different And by economy, I don't just mean finances. Your health, whatever. There's Lassa fever. There's what again? Huh? There's Zika virus. There's which one again? They are, they are there. He's the one you know you are mentioning. What of the ones that are arrows that fly by day? Have they told you on TV? The Bible. Listen, listen. Psalm 90. Don't turn there. Our time is gone. Psalm 91 said, Thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day. The noisome pestilence. Right? There are diseases. You breathe them all around. It takes a superior revelation to keep you. I reject everything whose price has been paid on the cross. I will not pay another price again. Are we together? You must understand the implication of your oneness with Christ. So he wants to be your helper. Can you hand over your life and say, God help me. Truly I've tried by myself. If you don't help me, I will never get this admission. If you don't help me, I will never graduate. If you don't help me, my certificate will remain a piece of paper. I will keep mocking myself with my accolades. Listen, if no one has told you, let me tell you again, our world is a cruel and a wicked world. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to trouble anyone. You just need to be alive. That's the condition to be a potential victim. When the Lord told me this, I said, Lord, I first, I receive for myself. I receive for myself. He is my helper. When God comes in to help you, 
he can round off what has taken you 10 years 10 years of captivity let me tell you something it doesn't take time when jesus is there it doesn't take time you will be watching the growth this is how it will live and you are saying where is it it's gone who is like him lion and the lamb seated on the throne His father and the you know why I raised that song? If you think there are many gods, I know that we claim we are not idols, but I will show you now that many of us have been practicing idolatry. You know why many people never believe God? We still have options. Your uncle still said, okay, let's just see what happens at the end of the month. So while you are saying, Lord, I trust you, what you mean is, Lord, I trust you through my uncle. Are we together now? Lord, I trust you through that, that CEO. I met him and he said uh, he will consider my promotion. Lord, I trust you through my job. God says he will bless you and he said, I know my salary is on his way coming. Lord, I trust you and you say, I know I, there's, there's that consultant surgeon. He's coming in next week from India. And God is just arranging it such that he's coinciding with my need. Who is like him? The lion and the lamb seated on the throne. Mountains bow down. Every ocean rolls to the Lord our Lord. Praise Adonai From the rising of the sun To the end of every day Praise Adonai All the nations of the earth All the elders and the saints Sing praise I believe God though I'm a man of faith I believe God he says, I know whom I have believed. I've seen God help people even in this place. In this place. Brothers and sisters, there is a mystery of lifting. God can take a man. You see somebody today and God can lift that person. He, he, they looked at Saul and said, when the, we can't see the process. When did Saul become a prophet? A man sleeps as a prisoner. But the next afternoon, he is already a prime minister. Oh, don't play with the God we serve. There is a mystery of the lifting of men. That you are about to die after one month. And after koinonia, you are not only alive, you are carrying the healing anointing. Who is this God that can bring speed to a man? I'm not motivating you. I know him there is a mighty god who can wipe the tears of people let me tell you this night before we pray just take away your mind from anything and everybody don't come to god with your calculation and say lord my prayer request i wrote my uncle he must answer me leave that one let god choose if god wants to use a chair to give you a breakthrough let him give it to you You've not read that God used a bed to bring bread for a man. Do you think if Elijah had an option, he would choose a bed? Was it not rock that brought water out from people? These things were not done in the spirit. It's just that we truly do not believe God. We think we do, but we don't. There are people who are sick here right now, but may never believe that God can touch them. Listen. Don't be so into your challenges that you think tonight God cannot touch you. It's easy to say, okay, God, I'm happy. I, I thank you for what you are doing. No, you must insist. Hallelujah. Luke 18 verse 1, the Bible says, He spake this parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. He said there was an unjust judge. He didn't fear anybody, not God, nor man. And there was this poor widow who said, avenge me my adversary. And for a long time, the man would not respond. 
and she kept pestering him when you place a demand with your faith there is enough grace there is enough anointing you can argue this and watch other people stepping into their testimonies but please tonight wherever you are inside and outside don't make it look like you have come to waste your time tonight are we together God has revealed to us that he's coming in as a helper bless you my dear as a helper as a helper this ministry has been helped by the Lord greatly helped by the Lord I think it was last week I was sharing the testimony we don't have the opportunity to share one tenth and by the way I want to challenge you when God blesses you don't keep quiet you return back to where you received the miracle and let the people of God know that this is what God has done I shared the testimony last week I think it was last week or two weeks ago when Kaduna after a meeting just to have lunch briefly and then rush back and I'm there and then a woman walks up to order a meal too and she's with a little son then I look at this woman and she was looking at me she said are you pastor Joshua I said yes ma'am and then she greeted me and I said sorry do I know you and she smiled she said I'll tell you a little story she said two years ago she came for counseling as wretched it was like she had come to the end of her life I share this to encourage you hallelujah and um, she said everything was scattering she was a single mom with a child supposedly no hope for marriage nothing was working they were about to throw her out on her job and I prophesied to her and I said they were going to call her back and send her to the marketing department she should not be afraid and she said man of God that's exactly what happened and she looked at me and she said can you imagine what has happened to my life she just put her hand like this and I saw a ring and she said I just got married two months ago and then she said I should look outside and there was a clean E class she said who would believe that in two years I'll be the one owning this my life has changed brothers and sisters if you will believe God can change your life if you will argue he will not argue with you he will leave you to continue until you find enough reasons please I want you to be angry today as we pray and place a demand on the throne of heaven and say Lord you must answer me whenever I call you you will answer me Elijah called on you and you answered him Moses called on you and you answered him that's why I know Wherever I call you, you will answer me. Seated here, inside and outside, in all of the overflows, there are people with medical reports that if God does not visit them this night, they are dying for sure. I bring you a message of hope. The helper is in the house. There are families here who are in situations that will take a vigil for them to explain because they, the situation is so scattered it doesn't have beginning and end they don't even know where the problem started from they know that they are in the middle of a situation but the helper when he comes he can make every crooked path straight there are people here trusting God for children there are people here trusting God for a turnaround breakthrough do you believe that God is stepping in? The worship team sang so beautiful and they challenged us. Do you believe that God is able to step in? We are going to pray right now. You are not praying for your neighbor. You are not praying on your request. You are going to pray for yourself and say, Lord, please, don't let me go back the same way I came. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside, please pray. yes lord hallelujah 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 one more prayer point the power of god is so strong in this place i'd like you to say lord visit the foundation of my problem 
and set me free please lift your voice and pray what you think may be the problem may not really be the problem Hallelujah. We're going to sing this song just seven times. And then I'll begin to minister. My goodness. I tell you, God will do extraordinary things in this place. I will praise him from everlasting. Everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting. Everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from, from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting no, 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 no. to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Praise the miracle walker from who will step into your life. Everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to One more time. Lord, we will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. Madam, let me talk to you, please. Yes. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. It's time for you to rejoice. The Lord is asking me to destroy witchcraft from your life and your family. Because you love the Lord, but there is a lot of oppression in your life. Is that true? Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that he's ending captivity today from your life. Right now, I command that spirit out by the power of the Holy Spirit. I stretch my hand. Something is leaving you. I'm seeing something being removed from your head. That's what I see happening. You will never be the same again. I command it out. By the authority of the kingdom in the name of jesus christ and god is removing something from your stomach too i'm seeing something leaving your stomach like a growth i command it to go now right now right now i will praise him from everlasting everlasting hallelujah everlasting madam check yourself Give her the mic. Check yourself right now. Your stomach area. Check yourself. What is happening? Look at this. 
because I saw that there was something. If I don't pray for you, huh? there's a movement. Movement, because I'm seeing something. Later they will tell you it's fibroid. Huh? You are you are even afraid of going to the hospital. The hospital. Yes. Because you think they will tell you it's fibroid. That's really what they would have told you. But today we cancel it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To everlasting to everlasting. Gabriel, I'm hearing the name Gabriel. Gabriel, Gabriel. Please let's save time. Gabriel, you are at that row. You are at the back. That row at the back. You are a gentleman at the back. That row there. Where is the person? Please come out quickly. You are wearing something like brown, brown shirt or something. Is there someone like that? Who is that? Come. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Eh? because I'm seeing another woman your mother is here the Lord is saying I should speak to her light is living from you outside there is a woman outside she's your mother where is she is she here or at, not outside at, at the is he at the edge of the wall or outside some who is that please is she here come mama God is wiping the tears of your family tonight Everlasting to everlasting, Lord, we will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting. Mama, you're welcome. Please stand up. This woman has suffered. I'm looking at this woman and I saw a load on your head that is reaching the roof and she's carrying it alone. Mama, can you hear me? Look at this woman crying. You see, some of you don't know why. God, this is not just showmanship. There are people here just seated close to you if they tell you their stories your own story will look like child's play because this woman has suffered mama you are a good woman but listen listen where where are you are you in zaria here in zaria what do you do i need to pray because i'm i'm seeing this is a cause i know I'm going to pray for you. Do you know why I call this boy? They want to kill him. That's why I want to pray for him. They caught. He matter they caught. This boy matter they caught. I go yesterday. Yesterday we go. They say on the ten. We will come back again. Eh? What court? He get problem. He matter they caught. If I don't pray for this boy, as small as he is, they are going to kill him. Do I know you? I have a case in the court. Why would we call somebody like don't don't be afraid, Mama? Because this thing will even cause you problem. Um, young man, I will pray for you. Mommy, look at me. This thing is a cause. Huh? The same way they killed your husband, they want to kill this boy and leave you in misery. Huh? Mama, I'm going to pray for you. There is a God that reveals secrets to men. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm seeing a load right to the roof on your head. You are carrying it alone. I will pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is wiping your tears. I'm seeing a mother outside. The Lord is showing me a mother outside. A woman outside. Uh, it's like you are wearing her tie. But it's not like her tie, same material. A tie like a normal this thing this is a, it's an elderly woman outside sitting just by this side of the window please i need to speak to her if there is somebody like that let's have a mother outside the lord is showing me mama 
I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus for God to change your story. I don't know what is in the court, but in the name of Jesus, we will change it. How old are you? You are 14. You will serve the Lord in the name of Jesus. You believe that? Where are you from, Mama? I'm from Edo. You are from where? Old Edo, from Okwela. Where are you from? You are from Edo State. That's what the Lord is telling me because the same thing He's delivering two of you from. You see that? Mama, I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. God is destroying that spirit. Father, I lay my hands on our mommy. The back pain, look at me, Mama. The back pain, you it 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 will be healed now. Amen. Hold my hands. Amen. Look at what is happening to her. Mama, shout Jesus loud. Jesus. Father, hold my hands for your glory. Mama, look at me. Look at me. You see something like fire moving at your back right now. That pain is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Do what you couldn't do. Check yourself. Do what you couldn't do. Look at, look at, help her, cover her. It will never return to you in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you, my friend. I'm seeing you, but I'm seeing two heads. This is a misidentity. The devil wants to misrepresent you, but I'll pray for you. Huh? Your passion for God. Have good friends. If your friends are not good, leave them this night. May God give you good friends. In the name of Jesus Christ, grace for you. That anointing comes upon you, takes you to a new dimension. This is the woman, Mama, you are welcome. Let's celebrate Jesus. I'll pray for you, but there is another woman I'm talking about. There is another Mama outside who needs to come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus. You have a daughter. Yes. Where is she? She's outside. She's outside. Call her. Come. Daughter, where are you? Please come. Everlasting to What's her name? Shim. Shim. Please, you had your name rush and come in. Our time is gone. Who is this? I told her to have the one. No. The woman... I'm talking about has her tie um, it's not the same as the material it's not the same as the material she's wearing I'm looking for a head tie that looks close to it ladies now the normal scarf that you carry and tie but I will pray for you anybody that has come out I'll pray for you I don't know why she's here she is, but I'll pray for you you are already out I'll pray for you please let's let me just minister to those that are here I'll pray for you Christ. In the name of Jesus. Please, you can return back to your seat. Let me talk to you. Your daughter? Uh, Mama, I'm going to pray for you. The Lord is visiting your family in the name of Jesus Christ. He's visiting your family. And look at me, my dear. God is taking delay from your family. Tell your mother. This is your grandmother, right? Huh? Who is like your mother? She is oh, mine. I see. I, I, oh, I get the story now. Your real mother is dead. Yes. This is your grandmother, but she's like your mother now. Yes. Oh, I see. Because the Lord is saying I should tell your mother, whoever is that, that she's going to lift her. Amen. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Mama, God is lifting you and is wiping your tears. And the Lord is telling me that he's adding years to your life. Yes. Believe me. Who is this? Your what? Sister, but she has um, son and daughter. You have a daughter? She has a daughter, but she's my elder sister. She's your elder sister? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll talk with you. We have to really rush. 
Mama, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. The God I serve will bless you. He will honor you. What do you do, my dear? I'm a student. Where? ABU here. ABU here. I'll pray for you. God is bringing favor upon your life. Look at me. You will really be a blessing to Mama. And make sure you bless her with all your heart. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Bless you, Mama. Come. Come two of you you love Jesus are you part of them come you love Jesus no you are stubborn come you need to be prayed for come you don't love Jesus you are, you are very stubborn but Jesus loves you you are a stubborn boy you have bad friends you don't listen we have to pray for you there is a spirit disturbing you you need to be delivered let her go right now out Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands. I command that devil. Hmm? They want to make your sister mad. Eh? What's wrong with her? It's mad, sir. She's mad. mad. Yes, sir. This is madness. She will be free right now. She came here mad. You are joking. This is koinonia. I command that spirit. She's mad. Out! You must go right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Release her hands. Release her hands. Hold me. Hold me. I command that madness. How can a lady like this be mad for God's sake? I command that spirit. They must leave you right now. In the name of Jesus, I set you free by the spirit of the Christ. Jesus, for your mercy, for your glory. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. This lady is not just mad. This was supposed to be an initiation. Hold on, please. This is a serious issue. This is supposed to be an initiation into the occult. This is not just mad, like occult, fly. This is occult an occultic thing it's not just madness and you if they don't pray you don't listen you are small but god will help you eh? don't be angry you have to leave your bad friends you hear me if not soon now you start taking a uh, what's that thing that cough syrup huh you hear what i'm saying yes sir huh yes sir please don't be embarrassed we're not we're not here to embarrass people you get what i'm saying we're not here to embarrass people I have to pray for you. What do you do? Um, I'm vibing in Sokoto. Eh? I'm staying with my elbow at in Sokoto. No, that's not what you are doing. Hold on. Why am I seeing a clipper? I'm vibing in Sokoto. You say you are staying with your brother. I'm seeing a clipper. Come. You two, two of you, God needs to help you. You are a good boy, but there, there's bad influence around your life. God even needs to visit your brother in Sokoto. Eh? You believe what I'm telling yes, you? Sir. You came from Sokoto? Yes, sir. All the way? Yes, sir. This one, where did he come from? He's staying with my mom here. He's staying with your mom? Is your mom here? No, sir. She's not here. I have to pray for you. Huh? Um, when, I'm, when I make the altar call, I'll make the altar call. Once you just hear the altar call, just run and come out. Hmm? It's time to be very serious. Jesus Christ will help you. You're a great person. Huh? You are a great person. You don't have any business doing what you are doing now. What took you to Sokoto? I went to school. Are you a student? No, sir. I have not gotten to admission yet. Your school is not Sokoto. Come back. Don't think somebody will manipulate you and do wrongs for you to get this and that because what you want to do is not very good. Eh? It's not a godly thing you want to do to get admission. Let's do things correctly. Huh? What do you want to study? Computer science. This is not computer science. I'm seeing IT. Something that has to do with, with IT. And God will bless you, but you need to settle down. Because the way you are desperate for admission now, you can you do everything. Have you written jam? Um, you are writing jam. On Tuesday. Huh? Tuesday. Well, I won't say it here. Be careful. Just be careful. You hear what I'm saying, Abi? You know what I'm saying. Yes, be careful. Eh? Because you can't want God to help you 
and you're already doing arranging. You know what I'm saying now? All these funny things people do for jam. What is not your own is not your own. I'm not embarrassing you. The Lord will step in and the Lord will bless you. Just hold that lady and let me minister to you. Who is this? Please, if I don't... Yes, Mama, Mama, come. Please, if I don't call you, you don't come out. Mama, I want to pray for you. You do business. Because you are supposed to do... There is business that God has been putting in your heart. Huh? Is that true? God, I see you do business. What you are getting from civil service is not enough to take care of you. And God wants to open a door for you. A business door. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to pray for you because God wants to really give you prosperity this year. Okay, thank you. Regina, Regina. I hear a name Regina. Regina, Lord, in the name of Jesus, step into our mother's life. Do a miracle for her right now in the name of Jesus. I hear a name Regina. Regina. Please, who is that? Do we have anybody? Outside. Regina, you are outside. There's nobody. We just move to the next case. You are Regina. Come, what do you do? I'm a saloonist. You are a saloonist. I need to pray. Bad luck. God wants to take away bad luck from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's marriage was cancelled. Come out, please. Your marriage. Who is that? No, not you. Somebody's marriage. I'll pray for you. Don't worry. You were supposed to. You've even started the arrangement. They just cancelled it like this. And your heart is pain. Please come out. I want to pray for you. Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit is giving us grace. You are Regina. In the name of Jesus, God is giving you favor. Please don't sit back. This is a serious issue. In the name of Jesus, I lay hands on you. Please go back. I don't have to speak over your life. Once I lay hands on you, what do you do? I just graduated. Eh? Graduated from school. You just graduated. I have to pray for you because you love God. Yes, sir. Mind is who is supposed to they've started your marriage planning please come my sister I, I don't mean to embarrass you you get what I'm saying is to speak over your life you too what category are you here for huh? Regina okay I'll pray for you who has sickle cell there's a sickler here now you are the one please indicate eh, sweetheart. come Hold my hands. Look at me. Father, please do a miracle for this lady. You have changed several genotypes in this place. Change her genotype right now. In the name of Jesus. From SS to AA. Do it for her in the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, let me pr please. Um, are you based in Zaria here? Are you part of our prayer department? Yes, sir. Please be serious eh? and pray because uh, it's not just prayer department. After Koinonia, you can meet the media and listen to the messages. They will help you. You love Jesus, but your mindset is still very serious. And you can do anything, especially men. So please, you will listen to that message and the Lord will help you. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, come. I don't know what happened. I don't want to ask you. Please don't feel embarrassed. Huh? When do you want to settle down? It was supposed to be December last year. It was supposed to be December last year. What happened? You called me and said I should forget about everything. The guy called you and just told you he's not doing again. Yes, sir. Did he give you a reason why? No reason. Okay, let me tell you. Weep not. God saved you from heartache. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please. See, let me tell you, if you don't have the eyes of the spirit, you will be fighting God not knowing. Are we together now? I'm sorry to say, don't feel bad, don't feel embarrassed. You see that guy? It was three of you. You are not the only one. 
you have been sensing that there's another lady the other lady promised to do him something if he doesn't leave you that's why he, why he quietly called out of fear and all of that that he's, he may be a sincere person but him and women is even a spirit he needs help let me pray for you that God will bring the man he has destined you're a very nice lady father in the name of Jesus Christ I lay my hands upon her father send into her life the man a, a responsible and God-fearing man in the name of Jesus Christ and for your shame may my God give you double in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen let me just talk to two people and then we'll, madam please come that woman can I talk to you please clear the way for her madam please come please let's pray go ahead and pray pray in the spirit say father visit me madam please look at me I have to pray for you something is tying your finances down completely yes sir. that's the major reason why you came yes sir. is that true yes, you were asking the lord to visit your finances yes, because everybody will see you now and think things are just working but the truth is nothing is really working yes, sir. you need a serious miracle in that area that's true, sir. is that true yes sir. are you married yes but now i'm out of hold on place. don't worry you just answer you don't have to embarrass yourself because there is a spirit huh this spirit brings bad luck on your life People come to you and then in a few weeks or months, they will now fight you. This is still what happened in your marriage. It's true, sir. Because the man has gone. Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, is that true? Are you in your yes, husband's house now? No, sir. You are not in your husband's house. The Lord is bringing a miracle for you. Amen. What do you do? I'm an hairdresser. Your are? Hairdresser. Do you believe in tithing? Yes, sir. You tithe? don't feel embarrassed this is the one thing the devourer is marching in and out of your life because tithing is not in place please believe it it's not a gimmick by men of god is she your friend because i'm seeing light from you to her you know her eh? why have you not been talking to her about tithing even last week you discussed with her No, 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 don't feel bad. Madam, please, look at me. Tithing is not a gimmick by men of God. Believe me. You understand what I'm saying? It's the access points the devil is using. Where is your husband, the man now? He's at home now. Has he married another one? You want to get I will discuss with you, eh, madam. This is not something we will say in public. It's a very serious mm -hmm. issue. But I need to pray for you. But for now, I need to pray for you. There is bad luck. And we need to pray against it. Please don't feel bad. God is about to change your life. Please hold my hands. In the name of Jesus. I command that spirit. See, there is a spirit that is making this thing happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go. Release her right now. That spirit leaves you. Madam, go and prosper. You will prosper in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Um, there's a baby that is sick. I have to pray for that baby. I'm seeing a baby that is very sick. Very small baby. Sick. Your child? Is she sick? Yes, sir. What's wrong with her? She's having difficulties in breathing. Difficult in breathing. Difficulty in breathing. How old is the baby? It's five months. Five months. This is not the only baby. There's another one. Come, come. I'll pray with you. What did the doctors tell you about the baby? Syndrome. They said it's what? That is Down syndrome patient. Down syndrome? Yes, sir. We soon need doctor. Ah, you are a doctor now. Down syndrome. At least I know I don't know what causes it, but I know how it does. Please come, come, come and talk to us. Give us some little education. Let's cast it. Um, it's a congenital disorder. 
and the difficulty in breathing is most likely coming from a congenital heart disease. It mostly manifests with congenital heart disease. Then there are other um, manifestations too. From the fishy, you can um, see some of the manifestations also. I don't know what you said, but all but I know. <laughs> most likely, the difficulty in breathing is coming from a congenital heart disease. We're going to pray. This, this baby... believe that this child ah god do a miracle in the name of jesus hold him am i holding him right jesus christ father by the blood of jesus do a miracle in this child we change this situation in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit let there be a miracle in Jesus' name. I'm seeing one more child though. Who is that? Let's go. Please hold the child. You are the one who needs the healing first. Just hold the child. I hope the child will not cry. I have to pray for you. Huh? Something is really fighting you. Huh? This is witchcraft. Let her go. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command you, you know my voice. In the name of Jesus, she's been translated from the kingdom of darkness into light. And you must let her go. I'm seeing this lady in the realm of the spirit like a tree. That is, is refused from moving. Hold my hands. You must be free right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those dreams, those oppressions, I come against them in Jesus' name. Let's pray for the baby. What's wrong with the baby? She has been coughing and stooling. Coughing and stooling. Baby, how are you? In the name of Jesus Christ, we speak to you. No more coughing. In the name of Jesus Christ, perfection in your body. I release the power of the Holy Spirit upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus. The power flows through this baby. Jesus name I hope the usher help her out because I'm sensing this anointing even on her in the name of Jesus Christ baby we take away everything that is not of God in the name of Jesus Christ look at me where is the man in your life one of the ushers okay I'll pray with you in the name of Jesus I'm seeing something that is serious but I'll talk I'll talk about it okay the Lord is showing me something that is quite serious. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. There are 13 people here. There is a strong influence of confusion and stagnation. Please listen. 13 people here right now inside and outside i'm going to pray for you right now wherever you are as i begin to pray it's like fire it will come upon you confusion stagnation at least 13 people i see in the spirit please lift your hands don't say anything just lift your hands i'll do the praying let's just flow the way the holy spirit is praying. lord jesus i'm praying right now by the ministry of angels 13 people by the influence of the spirit i stand under this apostolic anointing and i pray right now wherever you are inside and outside right now as i pray that fire starts coming upon them right now right now bring them out 13 people 13 people by the power of the Holy Spirit. I end it right now. There are still people outside, inside. That same people. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Bring them out please. 
right to the back right to the back right to the back right to the back i'm seeing fire it's like a spirit that will jump out of you right to the back inside outside i command that confusion outside the anointing of the holy ghost is resting on people confusion all the overflows in the name of jesus confusion must come to an end right now delay lift your hands i tell you there will be a mighty baptism outside outside at the count of three i want you to shout jesus when you shout it i see altars on fire are you ready now outside one two three bring them bring them fire is falling outside the bible says while men slept hear me there are things that tie the destinies of men jesus already paid the price that's why we are doing what we are doing the authority is that of jesus christ bring them in now listen listen my goodness you are going to lift your hands for your family i see the angels of the lord bringing deliverance for families listen at the count of three i tell you wherever you are i like you to shout jesus with all your heart some of you you are representing an altar of god for your family and the moment you do that in the name of jesus there will be a miracle one father for families let the soul of the spirit go from the north to the south east and the west of every family right now at the count of three one two three families 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 the sword of judgment Pray, pray. Make sure you're praying. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Now those outside listen. I came out because your destiny must open up. Lift your hands. I came out to bring the atmosphere of God's presence. Hear me. There is no one here whose destiny has been tied that that spirit will remain. I'm going to, listen. I'm going to begin to walk around. My goodness, I see angels by my left and right. As I begin to move across this place, the fire of God will start falling. Right now, I stand under this apostolic office and I declare my hands. Right now, right now, right now. I command us right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fire, 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 fire. Every spirit every devil from my left my right outside outside my left my right every devil right now i stretch my hands every spirit go 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 i command every spirit 
right now release them release them right now release them release them let attack go super hallelujah 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 those of you here lift your hands lift your hands i'm going to shout jesus just two times and i see like a tornado it's like the spirit will start moving right to the back that's what the lord is saying i should shout there are spirits time men it's your time to go now jesus get ready now get ready now jesus go 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 out out right now my left and my right i release spirit right now right now right now right now those spirits i command them to leave right now in the name of jesus out 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 by the power of the holy spirit i command right now right now i stretch my hands towards you every force tying you down in the name of jesus it must release you right now right now in the name of jesus hallelujah now listen those of you outside don't think you are missing anything at all that's why i came out i'm going to all the overflows those of us here you may be outside but let me tell you something god will step into your destiny please lift your hands because i'm seeing chains from where this camera is right to the end i'm seeing chains lift your hands i want you to shout jesus just once at the count of three and everybody under that influence must go right now please be careful with anybody close to you so that you don't stampede them father i chains of bondage but you organize this meeting to recover destinies therefore at the count of three it will come like fire on some of you one two three right now right now right now right now right now right now i cast that spirit i cast that spirit i cast that spirit let that go right now in the name of jesus 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 the lord is giving you a new song a new song the lord is wiping your tears you on green lift your hands take it now receive right now by the power of the holy ghost mama the lord is saying i should tell you he's wiping your tears god is wiping your tears in the name of jesus in the name of jesus the lord is saying what you could not do in five years you mama in five years he's making to happen for you in one year in the name of the lord jesus christ in the name of the lord jesus christ sir i have to pray there's delay in your life the lord wants me to break the spirit of delay i hope you are not embarrassed sir no hold my hand sir something will happen to you remarkably right now take it that devil of delay out of his life right now out out i don't know who this man is but he's stepping into a new level god is wiping the spirit of delay in the name of jesus i'm seeing in the spirit the name Eboni, Eboni state someone here from a boy state god is bringing a miracle at my back that person is at my back a boy state god is bringing a miracle wherever that person is in the name of the lord jesus christ who is margaret margaret i'm hearing the name margaret you are in this place oh no 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 there's a lady here margaret i'm seeing the lord is shining who is that come margaret you are margaret look at me the lord is wiping the tears of your family in the name of jesus christ i command that spirit to leave your family right now i see a family of five ladies none is married a family of five ladies the lord is showing me five ladies none is married 
None is married. He's on the wheelchair. How long have you been? Seven years. What happened to you? You were shot. Oh, you're a military personnel. Yes, sir. And you've had to leave the army because of it. Or you are still there. The but then you need to walk. Yes, sir. Wow. You can't feel. No, I cannot feel. You can't feel this leg right it's now. A spinal cord injury. Oh, it's a spinal cord. A lumbar problem. Yes, sir. I'll pray with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a family of five ladies. Please. I have to talk. Five ladies. None of them is married five ladies none is married no one among them is married god needs to do a miracle please make sure that we confirm the situation five ladies so that we don't say yes. we are faking it please make sure yes yes five ladies yes, where are you from yes i'm from edo state you are from edo state yes yes you two five you two you are together oh you are a sister you are his friend. So why are you here with him? To back him up? Oh, five ladies, yes. Okay. Okay, I'm going to pray for you right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit. There is a spirit that brings delay in your family. And I take authority over that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right now. There's somebody around here. You are into book selling, bookstore business. God wants to increase somebody's bookstore business. Here, I'm sensing it. I don't know if there's anybody here. You are into selling of books. The Lord is saying, prophesy increase to that person. Oh, Jordan is you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Jordan. You step into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Ah, but you are not related to him. You just came out. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for the people here. I hope they can hear me. Hallelujah. There's somebody I need to pray for here. Call that lady. Call that lady. You. Don't think distance is a barrier. Believe me. God can fish you out from anywhere. Look at me. I know you are standing by the fence, but God is wiping your tears. He's giving you a new song. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release that anointing upon you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God has answered your prayer. You are praying that I minister to you, you and your friend. Where is your friend? Where is he? Lift up your hands, two of you. You will step into an anointing. Huh? Hold your hands together. In the name of Jesus. Look, I stretch my hands right now. Let it fire come upon both of you right now right now in the name of the lord jesus christ you step into a strange dimension let me talk to the people here i want everybody to be able to know that when you come for this meeting it doesn't matter where you are god can visit you no don't worry just just leave the person grace i hear a name grace grace Grace, there's someone with the name Grace. Is there someone like that? Grace, Grace. I need to pray for Grace. Grace, Grace. And I'm hearing Garba, Garba. I'm hearing a name Garba. God is ministering to somebody, I don't know if it's a son name or a name Garba. In the name of Jesus, Garba, where are you? Your name is Garba. Your son name is Garba. Where is your dad? He's outside. He's in Saudi Arabia. He's, a, he's, he's in Saudi Arabia. Because I'm seeing God is saying, look at me. God is saying I should tell you that there's going to be increase for your family. Okay. And it's, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. You have to be very serious with me. You are going to be very wealthy. You are going into oil and gas. Amen. Are you hearing me? I don't know you. I don't know anything about you. But I'm seeing that you are going into oil and gas. And God is going to honor you. God will bring a man into your life. Bless you. I'm seeing three people here. You are writing jam next week. Jam. No, no, not everybody. Hold on, hold on. Just relax. I'm going to pray for everybody. Here, where I'm standing. You are writing jam. Three people.
the writing jam. Somebody is writing it for the fourth time. That person, you are the one. This will be the last time. Do you know me? Come, come and stand. What, please remind me in case I forget. This jam thing, we have to settle it once and for all. Please. People who are writing this thing again and again. I curse that spirit. This overflow, these ones looking at me, please lift your hands. Not these ones, those ones, exactly. Please lift your hands. Please don't think that because of the distance, all right, God cannot touch you. There is a reason why I'm coming out with this because sometimes inside is just a fraction of those outside. And I want you to feel a sense of belonging to know that God is able to visit you and to minister to you. Hallelujah. Those outside here there are at least two of you fire is coming upon you right now i see the power of darkness being broken lord where are they right now i stretch hands in the name of jesus christ i stand upon this anointing wherever they are father there is a lady right now it's like fire is coming upon you right now right now right now in the name of jesus christ that fire is coming upon you all of you standing here, I prophesy to you, in the name that is above all names, hear me. Whatever has tied your progress, I'm talking to those here. I stand under this anointing and I declare a change of story right now. Benway State, there's someone here from Benway. Benway. Um, Benway State. You have an elder brother. Please make sure that you don't come out. We are not faking this thing. Please, you have another brother. Where? I'm going to pray for you. God is visiting your family. Visiting your family in strange ways. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying, I should tell you that if you seek him with all your heart, he will surprise you. I hear what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm seeing a lot of families here under financial stagnation and the Lord is saying release them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please listen, listen. Please believe what I'm saying. Don't come and waste your time. God brought you here to wipe your tears. Any family here, you have tried and tried and tried. Doors have refused to open. I open it for you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see somebody here. You are looking for a job. June. Um, you are looking for a job in Abuja by June. I see a job coming. This is what God is saying. I don't know who I'm speaking. But God is meaning somebody. Your name is Grace. Where is your mother? Kogi State. I need to pray for you because there's wisdom. I take authority over that spirit. Of Jesus. I need to pray for somebody, two of you. I want you to follow me. You smoke this thing. Uh, what's the name of that? It's not just dab out. Weed. Please, don't be embarrassed. Two of you, you really smoke it. You love the Lord, but this thing is a challenge. Please follow me. Your deliverance has come. You smoke weed. Your own is not just... Uh, all that cigarette please don't be embarrassed follow me and i'll i'll pray for you and brother here listen listen god is speaking to you you came for koinonia but you left a lady in your room you left a lady in your room you told her you are coming for koinonia and you will come back please don't destroy yourself and destroy that lady because your going back now is to get that lady pregnant and you'll be in trouble. God is saving you. Send her a text now to go home. You are born again. One, once I make altar call, wherever you are, please march to the front. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The power of God is coming on some ladies here. I've seen in some at least three ladies. Severe menstrual pain. This is not, this is something that for one of you is in your family. Lift your hands, please. Just here, this region. Right now, the fire of God is going to come on some ladies. I take authority over that spirit. Right now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ right now right now I cause that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ a lady will feel like fire on her stomach right now it will come upon you like fire I take authority over it right now in the name of Jesus Christ and there is a lady that the Lord is showing me for four months you have not seen your period four months you have not seen your period I think you need to talk to your friend to help you because before the end of this meeting is returning in the name of Jesus Christ I see someone's family um, like relative in prison there's somebody here like that in prison one of your relatives I don't know if he's in a police station or prison something like that God is doing a miracle who is that there's somebody like that you're the one come who is in prison your nephew are you sure which prison is in Gobe State how long is his tenure five years five years how many years has he done one one year we are going to pray for mercy you will not reach five years we are going to bring him out you believe that lift your hands for him step in and give me the mighty name of Jesus lift your hands my dear look at me I'm seeing a crown being put on your head you this are you hearing me God is bringing you into a new dimension of grace father I stretch my hands to her right now right now that fire comes upon you right now in the name of Jesus let me talk to the lady with the pink cap you lift your hands Beauty for ashes. That's what God is saying is bringing. Beauty for ashes. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is bringing a restoration to your family. Your family is experiencing In the name of Jesus Christ. Joseph. Joseph, I hear you. Joseph. Joseph, you are wearing a short dress. Joseph is wearing a short dress. Joseph. You are in the crowd. I'll pray for you. But the Joseph is inside the crowd here. Who is that? Come out. Your name is Joseph. I will pray for you. God wants to lift you. Lift your hands. Something will come on you. You are in the God is white. Right. In the name of Jesus Christ, a new dimension of grace. Your Joseph, look at me. What are you studying? Are you a student? So you are done with German. What you are to study? I think engineering. Agri. You are going to be a businessman, and God is going to honor you. In the name of Jesus, Joseph John. Where is he? Come. Why did you stop doing business? There's an anointing for you. Go back and the Lord will honor you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come. Where is your mother? Where is the village? The Lord is saying, I should tell you, the way he will lift you, all those who know you will be surprised. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord will lift you. Eh? Because I'm seeing your story similar to that of Esther in the Bible. Go and read the story of Esther. How that God can pick somebody who is supposedly nothing. Someone's sister here is barren. Who is that person? Barren. The Lord is saying it's time for the child. Not you or your sister. Is how many years? Six years. You follow me. How, how many years? Eleven years. Two of you come. The Lord is responding. You too. Please follow me. Madam, look at me. Confusion is ending in your life. Come. Come. The Lord is bringing an end to confusion in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, everyone, lift your voice and pray and say, Father, you are changing my story. There is a habit God is setting you free from. It's a terrible habit right now. Be free. It's not a habit you should practice at all. 
God is setting you free from it. Somebody here has eye problem. No, 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 not eye. I'm going to for you. There's somebody here with eye problem. Your eye pains you if you see light. Who is that person? I'm going to bring status is changing. I'll bring no more desire. You get discouraged easily. God is saying that you should be better not be discouraged. Who is the person who is? Lay your hands on your hands. Status is changing. In the name of Jesus. No more desire. Let's go. I'm on my way to better Those days. Those things, please follow me. Status is changing. No more The Lord is bringing me to a new dimension. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord wants to release certain kinds of miracles right now. Who are all these people following me, please? Hold on. The Lord wants to release fruitfulness. Please be sensitive, everybody, inside and outside. He's using children as a point of contact, but this will affect every other area's life. Every other body's. Um, how many years? Six. Six years. Your sister, yes. where is she? She's in Zara. How about you? 11 years. Oh my God. My auntie. 11 years. Ah. Why didn't they come for the miracle service? She's in Abuja. No, 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 no. Please, don't, don't just come out carelessly. Please, please. Okay, come out. The Lord is asking me to let you come out. Please. I'm going to pray for the sick, but barrenness issue. Let's deal with it right now. Tonight, I want God to step into people's lives. I think you should honor what Jesus is doing in this place. Look at the number of issues. Believe me, when I tell you there will be testimonies. If you are standing here for yourself, just move this way. If you're standing for yourself, move this way, please, so that I know. Please, just move here. I will worship him forever, love me forever, because this is God is to do. Please, this way, just let there be a separation. My, my brothers and sisters, please see how many people the devil is tying down. The Lord is bringing you into an anointing. It's a healing anointing that is coming on you. I see an angel of the Lord pouring like oil upon your head. You, you looking at me. Something is being activated in your spirit, man. Step into that oil, that fountain. It's that healing anointing. Koinonia, please, I want you to know that this is a platform that God has created to wipe the tears of men. As we gather there every week, God is doing something. Please be patient with God tonight and let him do something in your life. Because I have to pray for the sick. I'm only going to lay hands on those who are standing here for themselves because I want them to return with the testimony. But for all of us who are connecting for other people, you, lift your hands. You out right now, right now. It's a curse upon the family. You are going by the spirit of the living God. Right now, you are a devil of darkness. I see you in the spirit, and there must be that release right now. Please, those of us here, talk to the Lord on behalf of your loved ones and say, Lord, you must change your story. You must change your story. Those of us here, I'm going to lay hands on you by you. Please pray. 
Thank you, Jesus. All right, lift your hands, everyone, here. This category, just lift your hands, please. For time's sake, I may not be able to lay hands on you, but I want you to believe. Something is happening to you that is happening to your loved ones. You need to call them and believe. Many of you are receiving for your loved ones. My goodness, I hear the cry of children. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a miracle right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Receive it for your loved ones. Receive it right now. I open wombs, I open wombs, I open wombs. In the name of Jesus, I open wombs. I command a remembrance. A remembrance right now. In the name of Jesus. Right here, we declare miracle children. For your loved ones. Miracle children. They take in right now. And nine months after now, they give birth to their children. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please go back to your seat. God bless you. God bless you. Those who are standing here, I'm going to pray for you. Please make sure you are married. If you are not married, please don't embarrass yourself. Go back to your seat. Praise the Lord. Let me pray for those who are standing for themselves. We have to pray. That's why you came. Hallelujah. Remember the testimony that God gave a woman who had been barren for eight years. How many years? Eight solid years. And God gave her triplets. They are still alive till today. Triplets. Triplets. Please, I want you to believe God. If you are standing husband and wife, no problem. You are standing for your wife, no problem. Just make sure you are married. That's the only thing we are saying. Please. I'm going to pray for you. Stretch your hands over them and pray because we will release fruitfulness right now. In the name of Jesus. I don't care what the problem is. Jesus is stepping in. My confidence. The source of my strength. You. The strength of my life. You. My hope and my joy. You. Hey, my confidence. You. I looked around and I suddenly realized. That you've been so good to me. Your mercy is everlasting, undenying, overwhelming. I tell you, celebrate God because this will end. Who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you hear my call when I call you? Who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you hear my call? The source of my strength are you. The strength of my life are you. My hope and my joy are you. Hey, My confidence are you. The source of my strength are you. The strength of my life are you. My hope and my joy My confidence are you. Hey, I am miracle madam go and return back with your child in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus let this womb be open in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus let there be a miracle in the name of Jesus madam you are coming back with a testimony what is there has been removed in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord wipes your tears right now in the name of Jesus where is your husband sir please stand near your wife there's a reason why the Lord is asking can you hold her hands hold on 
I don't care what the doctors say. You are returning with your testimony. The Lord is giving you a baby girl and then a baby boy. I know you want a boy, but God is giving you a baby girl first and then a boy in the name of Jesus. Make sure you come and testify. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, a miracle, a miracle. But there are still three more cases we'll deal with very fast. We'll pray for this just for one minute and then I'll begin to prophesy. There are people who have not yet received what they came for here. Please, just be patient with us. Please, this is a miracle service. Right? So that we can justify our coming. Please, let's rise. We'll just do this in one minute. I'd like you to believe. Stretch your hands here right now. Stretch your hands in one minute and let's pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards the prayer request and let's pray. Prophesy over it. Your request is here. Lord, we turn it into a testimony. Please make sure those outside their requests are here too. If they are here to collect your request, just wave it inside and outside and somebody will come and attend to you. Are you praying? Prophesy. Father, this must become a testimony in my life. This must become a testimony in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you answer prayers in this place. Let there be miracles, oh God. Let there be breakthroughs, oh God. Supernatural miracles. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Miracles upon miracles. Miracles. Visit everyone. Visit issues of concern. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I prophesy over this request in the name that is above all names. That every request represented here no matter how impossible it is by the power that raised christ from the dead let every dead situation here come back to life in the name of jesus christ i pray by the power of the holy spirit my god we sang that you are not a man turn every captivity here Turn every captivity here in the name of Jesus. Now, I want to prophesy to us. Please lift your hands. Um, you don't have to bring them out. It will be, just give me 10 more minutes, but it's going to be extensive prophecy. Extensive prophecy. I want to speak to you because I know the things that, I see things in the spirit that have not yet been received. We have to pray in the name of Jesus. Please. I want you to believe God and lift your hands. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. The Lord is starting off with direction. There are people here who came praying, Lord, what is the next step of my destiny? Wherever you are, I'm prophesying to you. As I speak, fire will come upon you. Just on your head. Some of you will start feeling fiery sensations on your ears. The Lord is bringing direction right now. I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Right now. Right now. Supernatural direction. Help that guy. In the name of Jesus. Every confusion in your life. Those outside, make sure you participate. Someone is asking, oh God, what is the next step? I pray by this anointing, receive direction right now. Receive direction right now. In the name of Jesus. Someone's marital destiny is under siege. Right now in the name that is above all names. An anointing. A yoke breaker anointing. I prophesy receive it right now. I open those doors right now. 
inside outside i open those doors right now hallelujah there's someone praying you are asking god for money for rent rent the lord is telling me that between now and monday morning there is a miracle coming for you there is a miracle coming for you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there are ladies who have even guys this spell of disfavor please listen in the name of jesus you will literally feel like something being wiped out of your face i see many people being affected by this lord where are they that mark of disfavor by this anointing right now right now i break that mark right now inside outside in the name of jesus i tear of that mark that mark of disfavor that embargo of bad luck upon your life that makes things not to work i come against it in the name of jesus hallelujah listen you have come to the end of your road and if god does not step in there will not be any way out i pray for you that door closed over your destiny that will not allow you move to the next level i stand under this anointing in this miracle service and i prophesy i command that door to open right now oh come on believe it believe it i command that door to open shakatata i command that door to open swing open in the name of jesus whatever has been emerged from heaven to enter your hand and is yet to enter your hand please stretch your hands towards me shalakataya in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands back receive it right now receive it receive it receive it right now everything that must enter your hand inside and outside i command it from the realm of the spirit i deliver it to your hands in the name of jesus hallelujah everything that has refused to grow in your hand ideas businesses please listen everything that has refused to grow in the name that is above all names return and cause it to grow return and cause it to grow i command that business grow i command your family grow i command your finances grow i command your ministry grow hallelujah i pray for you you hear me pray this all the time because i've seen what it can do in the life of a man where are your destiny helpers if there is one prayer you must receive in this place listen god can use men to help a man and in one day god can bring the right people to wipe your tears lift your hands in the name of jesus the son of the living god where you have struggled and struggled with no hope of help as you lift your hands let an anointing from heaven land upon your life and call help us right now right now right now i release that anointing upon you for help for help for help for help take it receive it the anointing listen all you need in your life one person can just tell you do a b c or i know a who can do b for you and it can open you up to a whole new world one more time i pray i call them from the north the south if they are in zaria here 
we call them if they're in kaduna state we call them any part of nigeria receive their ministry now receive their ministry now Whoever has vowed to destroy your life, I'm praying. Oh, this is judgment. In the name that is above all names. If there is any human entity standing there, I declare, let this night be a night of judgment. Let this night be a night of judgment. Let this night be a night of judgment. Listen, when Pharaoh refused to allow Egypt, Israel go, God took his firstborn. Whatever must be taken from your enemy to let you go, we take it tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hear me? Let me tell you the truth. There are men that hold the destinies of people low. I teach you principles of success. But I'm spiritual enough to know a man's destiny can be kept at a standstill. Whoever kept your destiny at a standstill, in the name that is above all names, I put an anointing upon you. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. In the name of Jesus. Go forward. I prophesy in your career. Go forward. In every area of your life. Hallelujah. Let me speak over our finances. You see what is happening around the nation. Father, we believe in the power to prosper. And we believe in favor. Ah, there is such a thing my brother and my sister call favor. Lift your hands. My God and my King. That anointing for favor that was on Joseph. That anointing that made five loaves and two fish. To feed 5,000 people. Wherever you are. May that anointing come on your life right now. It's coming on people. May that anointing come upon you. It comes upon you right now. Hallelujah. Some of us are moving. But our pace is too slow. That's the truth. We need acceleration. We are moving, but your pace is too slow. There are things you should do in two weeks, not three years. There are things you should do in one day. I'm praying for you. The Bible says, and the hand of God came upon Elijah. And he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. The anointing that must come upon you, that between now and next month miracle service, what has not happened from when koinonia started may the god that i serve release it into your life i command speed 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 i prophesy it speed hallelujah all those writing jam lift your hands it's time for you to move forward if you are not writing you can stand in for somebody maybe your loved ones or whatever in the name of Jesus the Bible says and when they were tested in all matters of wisdom hear me Daniel was found ten times better that ten times better unction as you write your jam may the angel of wisdom cause you to pass this jam in the name of Jesus There are people who suffer and read and sit there in front of that computer and don't know what to do. You will know what to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I'm led to pray for those in final year. I don't know why, but the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. We need to release you. There are things that have come up. Some of us, physically speaking, it's obvious there is trouble. Where is that God who can correct a man's mistake? I pray for you. In the name that is above all names, you will graduate this year. 
I said you will graduate this year. I don't know how it will happen, but you must graduate this year. Hallelujah. The secret, receive this, two more and we are done. The secret, the ideas, the strategy you need for the next level of your life. I'm praying for you. Please lift your hands. There will be a strong impartation. God is releasing anointings for creativity. Some of you, it will come upon you. You will not know why. But when you sleep, you will see it in dreams. My God, I'm praying. I see this thing falling on at least 40 people. In the name that is above all names. That anointing for creativity. Receive it right now. Right now, right now, right now. An impartation. An impartation. An impartation. An impartation. Inside, outside, inside, outside. Take it. Take it. Take it. Creativity. Ideas. I send them from the spirit. Concept. Right now, right now. Business ideas. Career ideas. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to pray the last prayer. Breakthrough. You don't know what breakthrough is, some of you. Let me tell you what breakthrough is. Breakthrough is when the barrier standing between you and the next level is not lifted, destroyed. If it's lifted, it can appear in your future. Please listen. Some of us, what you need is breakthrough. You don't even know the name of the situation you are in. But I pray. At the count of three, I want everybody to just shout breakthrough. As loud as you can. And something remarkable will happen. I'm seeing rain falling. That's what I'm saying. Father, this is the instruction you gave me. As we shout. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody's husband. Husband. Somebody's husband is receiving breakthrough somebody's husband husband at the count of three one two three yes lord receive it receive it receive it malakata bababa breakthrough breakthrough i smash those barriers breakthrough in the name of jesus breakthrough I mark you with an anointing that anywhere they see you, they will be compelled to bless you. Listen to what I'm saying. I mark you with an unction. I mark you with a mystery. And I command that anywhere they see you, may they bless you. Anywhere you enter, may this anointing force men to bless you. Anywhere you travel to, may this anointing distinguish you. Isaac blessed his son and said, the smell of my son is like the field. Brothers and sisters, hear me. There is a fragrance that can come upon a man that will force men to bless you anyhow. I don't know who must appear to bless you, but I'm saying it again. In the name of Jesus, I mark you with a mystery that forces men to bless you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like, 
this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye